Shop our entire lineup of your favorite new BMW models located in Egg Harbor Township and online at BMWAtlanticCity.com. Home of the Sports Bash with Mike Gill, 97.3 ESPN, WENJ, WENJ HD, Millville, Atlantic City. Isn't it about time for somebody's favorite radio program? Yeah. 97.3 ESPN presents The Sports Bash with Mike Gill. When I'm driving, I got a guy on the radio who talks to me. I can't see him, but he talks to me. Now, live from inside the Ocean Casino Resort Studio, here's Mike Gill. Hump day Wednesday edition of the Sports Pass. Josh Hedick pulling it for Mike Gill here on 97.3 ESPN FM and 97.3 ESPN mobile app powered by First Bank of Sea Isle. I mean, it would only be appropriate in a time where we only hoping Joel B comes back sometime soon that we would open the show with Joel Embiid's favorite Pro Wrestling Walkout song, D-Generation X, on a hump day Wednesday. The final live show of the week for me. We're going to cram everything we can into a four-hour marathon. You, me, and a lot of talk out here on 97.3 ESPN. Let's lay out the groundwork for you guys coming up on today's show. We got a jam-packed lineup. Mike Day from WrestleMania is coming up in about Oh, less than three minutes, I can actually say. Kevin Durstor, Flyers Insider from 97.3 ESPN. Big win for the Flyers last night, but is there some disharmony in paradise? Don't the Fourier scratch yesterday the Flyers win, and there's some questions about communication going on up there with the Flyers. UFC Atlantic City returns on March 30th. We will be joined by the headliner of that event, Aaron Blanchfield, one of the top women's flyweights on the planet. We'll forward forward with Jeff Poster, powered by the Internet of our podcast, coming up later in today at 4 p.m. We'll get into him today, the Eagles roster right now, or what is next for the birds. Five from Danny Ryan coming up at 4.30. And then it's also a Weinberg Wednesday, Dave Weinberg, 97.3 ESP in the comments, Sports Thomas usually joins me at 6.20 on game night. So you can come on an hour earlier here as I join for my deal on the sports match. All of that, along with the final opportunity to qualify for the Phillies trip to Baltimore today. Yes, today is the final day. Your final chance to qualify. When you hear the sounder each hour here on the Sports Bash, you will be getting in call number seven when you hear the sounder each hour, and you will be qualified for the Phillies trip to Baltimore contest. And then you must be present next Thursday, March 28th, at Maynard's in Margate for the Phillies watch party with Mike Gill and the Sports Bash here on 97.3 ESPN. So we get a lot to get to this hour. Plus, I'll get you my question of the day a little bit later as well. Getting some good feedback for the folks over on the Facebook page. But before we get to the question of the day, I, I do want to get to what on earth. And I, I say that with all due respect. What on earth did I watch on television last night? You know, I'm a sports fan, okay? And I believe the majority of you out there listening to the sound of my voice on 97.3 ESPN FM or you're listening on the 97.3 ESPN mobile app, which is free thanks to First Bank of Seattle City. Wherever you're listening, we appreciate you tuning in. So wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, I'm assuming that you are, like me, a sports fan. I'm assuming that you 
like me, when you expect to put a game on television, okay, when you expect to tune in to a sporting event, you have a certain level of expectation. So last night, after the Flyers found a way to win that game against Toronto, I flip over to March Madness. I'm like, okay, first four, second game was Colorado State, Virginia. And by the time I flip over from the Flyers to March Madness, I don't know what I was watching anymore. It was a train wreck. Virginia looked like they didn't belong in the same galaxy as Colorado State. And this is what is so frustrating about college sports right now. Because when you have a diehard sports fan like me, a diehard sports fan like me who says, I will watch every Eagles game, every Sixers, every Flyers, every Phillies game, whether they are good or bad. I will watch the random baseball game, the random college basketball game, the random NBA game, the random NHL. I'll watch all these games because I love sports. But the majority of people are not the diehards that I am. And the majority of people are going to turn on that game last night between Virginia and Colorado State and say, well, this is trash. Change the channel. And I know they do that because they have done it with the teams they love. People stopped going to Flyers games. People stopped going to Phillies games. There was a time where Sixers attendance and viewership was in the dumps over a decade ago. There is a long history in sports fandom of people saying, this is not worth my time. This is not worth my money. And the fact that a group of people sat in a room and said, I got an idea. Colorado State versus Virginia. Let's put Virginia in the tournament. But there were not one, not two, but three potentially deserving Big East teams that didn't get in. And considering the fact that the Big East had a larger scale of viewership for their conference tournament than any other men's tournament out there last week. And you only put three of those teams in. But Virginia got beat by 20 plus last night is an absolute joke. And I genuinely hope that when the tournament starts tomorrow and when you hear the games from 12 p.m. to midnight here on 97.3 ESPN, that any other games that are supposed to be competitive, Clemson, New Mexico, Nebraska, Texas A&M, that these games are not one-sided blah. Because you know what's going to happen? People are going to go try to watch something else. People are going to go find their entertainment elsewhere. And I don't understand how in any reality that could happen. You know, I'm sitting here last night. I'm thinking about all the things I could be doing except for watching Virginia and Colorado State. And the only reason why I kept watching it was because it was a beautiful train wreck and I couldn't stop looking at how horrible it was. So for you guys as sports fans, I want to know what you guys do. Let me know at 609-403-0973. What do you do when a train wreck game comes on your television? Because I am not the measuring stick. Okay? I will watch all four Philly sports teams when they're bad, good or bad. Not just because it's my job, but because I've done it most of my life. I remember Robert Person starting opening day for the Phillies over 20 years ago. I remember Omar Dahl losing almost a million games for the Phillies over 20 years ago. I remember when the Sixers were running out there with Evan Turner. I remember the Speedy Claxton era. 
I remember Andre Miller. I remember Terry Cummings in the 90s and Dana Barrows. I will watch my teams. But I understand not every fan has the patience or the stomach to do that. So I want you guys to tell me, what do you do? Do do you you flip on the game? Do you flip it over to the streaming platform? Do you just turn the TV off and go spend time with your family? Like, what do you do? Because me as a sports fan, I look up and I'm like, why am I watching this game? 609-403-0973 is the text board and your DMs into the 973 ESPN mobile app powered by First Bank of Seattle. Because the only way that I could even mention the Flyers to open a hump day Wednesday show, the day before March Madness, the day that I give out all of my picks for better or for worse right here on 97.3 ESPN later in the show. And I don't talk about the Eagles and I don't talk about the Sixers. The only way that happens is that the Flyers are good and the Flyers broke an eight game losing streak against the Toronto Maple Leafs last night. And right now, thanks to their win last night, they have positioned themselves to continue to hold that three spot in the division. 78 points. They are keeping pace ahead of the Capitals and the Islanders. And right now in the Eastern Conference playoffs, even the Capitals are still on the outside looking in of the wild card because they are behind the Detroit Red Wings. The Flyers are going through the toughest stretch of games. And under a previous set of circumstances, if the Sixers were interesting and fun and the Phillies were actually playing, so still in spring training, we would be talking about those. But how can we not mention that the Flyers just beat one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference and they did it without their captain who was a healthy scratch? I mean, this belongs on a reality TV show. How on earth do you bench your captain, people say? I mean, even Paul Hudrick, Liberty Ballers, covers the Sixers for years. Even he said in our segment yesterday, I don't know why they're healthy, scratching, strong, Couturier. That's ridiculous. Even the Sixers guy is saying, I got something to say about this Flyers team. That's how far the Flyers have ascended. And, you know, when I was co-hosting with Billy Schwein this past Saturday in the locker room here on 97.3 ESPN, we had Flyers president Keith Jones on. I asked Keith, what is it like to be with an organization that is all of a sudden potentially the best team in the city? And he left and he said, well, it's different, (laughs) you know, because even he understands how unique and odd this situation is. The Flyers right now have four more games against some of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. If they can survive these next four games, I'm not saying they can put on cruise control, but they certainly have survived the hurricane. Speaking of, they play the Hurricanes tomorrow night, then the Bruins, back-to-back, then they play the Panthers, then they travel to the Rangers. Then it gets slightly easier because then they got the Canadians and the Blackhawks before a showdown with the Islanders, one of the team that is trying to jump over them in the standings, but they're not doing a very good job at it, obviously. But in past years, what would we do? I would run into people who would say, why are you watching the Flyers game? I would run into people who would say, why do you care at the Phillies? They stink. But now the Flyers have ascended to a team that is right there in the playoff hunt. They are, right now, one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. And beating Toronto puts them in the unique position to maintain their pace ahead of the teams behind them. And can you imagine a world where we get to the postseason 
and the Flyers and Sixers are in there. You know what some of you out there are going to say? I have more faith in the Flyers than the Sixers. Because that's where we all are with this Joel Embiid stuff. We have no idea when Embiid is coming back. We have no idea if he's coming back. We have no idea the timetable for when he's coming back. And as Paul Hudrick and Austin Krell have both brought up right here on 97.3 ESPN this week, when I've talked to them, Josh Hennig hanging out with you to hump day Wednesday, when I talked to them, they both said the Sixers don't want to put out any timeline and Joel come back sooner or later than that target date. But they're trying to keep the focus on he is coming back. In the meantime, though, the Flyers keep winning. The Flyers keep being interesting. Samuel Erson rebounding from some struggling games. The Flyers get their own drama. Sean Couturier will talk with Kevin Durso, our Flyers insider from 97.3 ESPN.com in less than an hour from now. But you guys tell me what you do. I know I should have stopped watching Virginia getting crushed by Colorado State last night. I should have stopped watching that embarrassment, but I couldn't. So what do you guys do? Let me know. 609-403-0973. Your DMs into the 97.3 ESPN Mobile app powered by First Bank of Sea Isle. Now, I got two very different answers on the text board so far. Two very different answers to my question. John from Galloway says, if I'm betting the game, it's tough to turn it off regardless. Also, blowouts like that are pretty easy to live bet. Yes, I'm a degenerate. And he sends the laughing emoji. So first of all, John, you know what they said? The first step to becoming better is admitting you have a problem. <laughs> no, but seriously, I understand where John is coming from. It's the I, There are so many times that I will watch a college football game or I will hyper-focus on a specific game in the NCAA tournament and I will focus on that game because I have a non-fandom rooting interest in it whether it is a bet, whether it is a pick, whether it is a, you know, whatever. Because, you know, for me, I like to track the picks I make. I know in this business it, it is a very um, zero, not a zero, a low accountability business that we are. In. You know, the, the media business that we function in, in sports media, has turned into a very low accountability, don't remember what I said yesterday kind of business. But I do try to track my picks. I like to see what I got right and got wrong. I like to have the accountability. So John is right. There is a part of you that says, if I am betting on this game or I pick this game, I am stuck watching it. So that's a good point by John and Galloway. All right. Another text coming in at 609-403-0973. Didn't leave their name, but Anonymous says, Josh, I'm a diehard sports fan too. Watch every minute of it. Okay, I actually have a sizable wager on Colorado State. But yeah, otherwise, I may have turned it off after they couldn't make a single basket for almost an hour of actual time and 14 minutes of game time for Virginia. Uh, text you're talking about. Yeah, not Miss Texture. It's a great point, you know. But it goes back to John's point. If you didn't have a rooting interest in the game, you're probably going to turn it off. You are probably going to change the channel. And I think that is one of the aspects of sports that I think, you know, some of the people who run these media companies that run these sports betting platforms that run these streaming services, I think they overlook, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, we, we are, we are in an era right now of streaming wars, right? Everybody is trying to get a piece of the, of the streaming pie of the attention of the masses. And you look around at the reason why, a company like Netflix that was losing subscribers for almost two straight years was still able to stay in business while they were still the number one streaming service while they were losing subscribers. It's because 
people were still watching. They just weren't watching as much. But it's also an example of why YouTube is now the number one streaming platform on the planet. The article came out last month that more people are watching YouTube than anything else. More than Netflix, more than Hulu, more than Disney+. Plus, More than Paramount+, Plus, more than Amazon Prime. So as everybody fights for a piece of the pie, why are they fighting for it? Because people want quality content. And unless you have a rooting interest, then why should you watch? Todd from Brigantine chimes in at 609-403-0973. says, if the game was at the 215 in the game of Thursday afternoon, no one would have even noticed. But because it was on by itself, everyone noticed. Also, you could have easily has said the same thing for Wagner up 17, but then you would have missed the 14-2 run by Howard Todd from Brigantine. A couple things, Todd. One, as I said previously, I was watching the Flyers game mostly yesterday. So, yes, I did miss the 14-2 Howard run because my attention was on the Fly Guys. So, now, the reason why I bring up Colorado State versus Virginia, Todd Brigantine, like I said, is because of the fact that once the Flyers game is done, I switch the channel back over to True TV. You know, yesterday was a very weird day because I saw maybe the first, I don't know, eight minutes of the first half of the Wagner Howard game. Then I flipped to the Flyers game. And then I saw the final eight minutes of the first half of the Virginia Colorado State game. So there was a gap for me when it came to watching these different games. So, um, but Tom makes a great point. If the game is in the middle of the afternoon, would anyone have noticed that Virginia is the worst team on planet Earth playing college basketball? At least in the tournament. Maybe not. It's a good point by Tom. Maybe there is... Excuse me. Maybe there is something to the fact that the game was a standalone game and there was nothing else to flip to that makes it more noticeably bad. But again, I still fall back to my previous question. If there is nothing else on television, yeah, sure, I understand that. But most people have something else to watch. They go to their streaming service. They go to something they have on their DVR, but you know, when the people still did, still did that, right? People do other things. So again, I ask the question, if there's a bad game on, what do you do? 609-403-0973. It's the text board. Mike Begay at the Press of Blank State will join me next to talk about all things sports in the world. We'll ask him about the NCAA tournament last night, his perspective on that. Plus, Phillies are a week away from opening day. Joel Embiid, we're still all in the holding pattern. All that and more still to come. Josh Hennig filling in for Mike Gill. On a hump day, Wednesday edition on 97.3 ESPN. You're listening to the Sports Bash with Mike Gill. On 97.3 ESPN and the 97.3 ESPN free mobile app. It's Phil's opening day at Maynard's Cafe in Margate on Thursday, March 28th. Win a Phillies road trip to Baltimore, Green Day, or sold-out Creed tickets. Visit for lunch or dinner and try Maynard's Famous Sandwiches and stay for the fun-filled nightlife. Come to Maynard's on Thursday, March 28th for the Phil's opening day starting at 2 p.m. There's always something exciting at Maynard's, including Easter Saturday with a special appearance by the Easter Bunny. Visit Maynard's today, your one-stop destination for fun in Margate ebay motors is here for the ride go ahead feel your engine admire that perfectly installed exhaust your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love with ebay motors you get over 122 million parts to keep it running and with ebay guaranteed fit they'll be the perfect fit every time plus at these prices well we're burning rubber not cash keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Sneezing, coughing, a stuffy nose, runny nose, post-nasal drip, interrupted sleeping. I just I was groggy at the end of the day. Allergies and sinus congestion were making Jana miserable. 
Then, a friend recommended Navaj. Navaj provides immediate drug-free congestion relief, flushing your nasal passages with refreshing saline and sucking out mucus germs and other airborne irritants. Navaj helps you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel your best right away. Navaj gave me instant relief. I didn't have to wait 30 minutes. I didn't have to wait an hour, 90 minutes. I didn't have to wait. I didn't have to wait a minute. I just, I ran the rinse and I felt immediately, I felt better. Stop suffering from congestion and start breathing and feeling your best again with Navaj. N-A-V-A-G-E. I've had people ask me how I find relief and I tell them Navaj immediately. This thing is amazing. Navaj is available at Navaj.com or at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. Hey, it's John Marks. Growing up here, I know that the fans get the last word. The fans have spoken and real Philly sports fans love the Bet Parks Casino and Sportsbook app. It's the only online casino and sportsbook app that I recommend. 24-7 live casino action. Join me now and download the Bet Parks app and all your favorite casino games are right at your fingertips. Bet on all your favorite sports. Philly hoops, Philly hockey, college basketball, and more. Odds, bets, slots, and games right in your pocket. Play the hottest online slots or play blackjack, roulette, baccarat, or Texas Hold'em with a live dealer right on your phone. Get winning on the Bet Parks app. It's so simple. New users join me right now. Just download the app and get up to $1,000 casino bonus back if you're not a winner in your first 24 hours. Details on the Bet Parks app or at betparks.com. New users only casino bonus must be wagered terms and conditions apply you must be 21 and in pennsylvania or new jersey gambling problem call 1-800 gambler at target our prices for easter are so low you can put all your eggs in one basket surprise them with target exclusive favorite day treats like our unique chocolate bunny and a cute basket all from just four dollars add in some fun with a six pack of bubbles 50 piece sidewalk chalk and super soft stuffed animals all from five dollars and get great family pics with new Easter looks. It's easy with women's and girls' dresses for only $20 and under. Low prices on everything for Easter? Now that's Target. It's buyback March at Matt Black Nissan. So bring any trade because AJ the trade man wants to buy your vehicle today. AJ pays $500 more than CarMax so you get more dough for your ride. Brand new Sentra for just $199 per month lease with zero security deposit. And only Matt Black Nissan has a four-day love it or leave it return policy. Oh yeah, it's on at Matt Black Nissan. Or drive home with zero down and zero interest for 72 months. Plus current Nissan owners get $1,000 owner Loyalty cash back on every clearly marked new Nissan in stock. Have a job clearing four fifty per week? We want to approve you today. And AJ wants your trade, but only at Matt Black Nissan. Oh. Great qualifications exist with approved credits. Thirteen eighty nine thousand five hundred. Not all qualified. Go to MetLifeNissan.com for complete details or calling four four nine one seven four seven five eight. Price includes all costs to be paid by consumer except for licensing, registration, and taxes. Centra Vin R Y two zero one zero five nine. Lease selling price twenty four five seventy nine. Expires four six twenty four. It's on at MetLife Nissan on the Black Horse Pike, Bank Harbor Township. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket, just like our customer Jaren. I'm the singer and guitarist in a band, and I use my Cricket phone for everything. It's basically like another band member. Don't miss a single beat. Switch today and get a free Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. Smile, you're on Cricket. Real customer paid for testimonial must bring your number to Cricket on up to a $60 a month voice plan depending on device. Select models only while supplies last. First month service charge and tax to its sale. Cricket 5G requires a compatible device and is not available everywhere. These terms and restrictions apply. See store for details. Attention lovebirds. Are you ready to take the next step in your journey together? Don't miss out on Sage Jewelers exclusive engagement ring sale. Sage has the perfect ring to symbolize your everlasting love with up to 50% off on their exquisite collection of engagement rings. Hurry, this sale won't last forever. Visit Sage Jewelers today. Tilton Road, North Northfield or online at sagejewelers.com. You're listening to The Sports Bash with Mike Gill on 97.3 ESPN and the free mobile app. Good year on The Sports Bash. Josh Henry Cronin for Mike Gill. On the hump day, Wednesday edition of the show. Get back to your thoughts and comments on the text board plus the question of the day at 609 403 0973 and your DMs into the 973 ESPN mobile app powered by First Bank of Seattle City. Mike Begay of the Press of Lake City joins us as he does every Wednesday here on Sports Bash on 973 ESPN. Mike, welcome back. How are you doing today? Hey, Josh, how are you? So I want to ask you at the start, I, I said earlier, you know, 
I I know I should have stopped watching the train wreck that was Colorado State Virginia last night, but I couldn't stop watching how horrible it was. Did did you sit and watch that game like I did, or did, were you smarter than me and turned it off? Well, I think in this case, Josh, I was smarter than you because uh, I watched the Wagner Howard game, uh, and after that, I flipped over to. Uh, a little NBA uh, season ticket and, and watched uh, Dallas Mavericks, San Antonio Spurs. I'm fascinated with Lyndon Yama. So uh, I watched the end of that game. And of course, I was getting the scores of the Virginia game and I kind of laughed. So I think I saw the score, you know, uh, 10 minutes into the first half was like 6 2 or something like that. And, and then, of course, I followed it since then. But I was smart enough to avoid that game last night. I mean, if you are a member of the NCAA, you got to be kicking yourself, right? Like, I mean, how on earth did you let that team get in? Yeah, and it, I mean, it's a Virginia team that's had some problems towards the end of the season, too, and was not playing particularly well. I, I think it'll be really fascinating, Josh, to see how uh, the tournament plays out, specifically, you know, in our area here to see, you know, uh, what it means for the Big East. Uh, you have only three Big East teams in, uh, you know, and, and two St. John's and St. Paul and Providence uh, that maybe think they should have got in. You have the conference, you know, that has produced, what, three of the last seven national champions and is ranked among the best conferences in the country again this year, but it got only three teams in. And, uh, you know, not a great referendum last night when you put Virginia in ahead of the St. Paul or St. John's or Providence. And that referendum will get even worse if the three Big East teams continue to play play well in the tournament. And one of them, of course, is the overwhelming favorite to defend their national championship. Also, Mike, I mean, the Big East had a higher average viewership than any other men's tournament on television last year. So you would think this is a TV product, right? Like we, we always say that talking people we know, Mike, it's about eyeballs. So. Why wouldn't you take four teams from the tournament, the Big East, that had all the eyeballs on it and put them into the biggest tournament? Well, I, I mean, if you already know, conspiracy right here, we'll put his conspiracy hat on. Sure, why not? To speculate that perhaps uh, this is a move by the Power Five conferences, the football playing schools, to make sure that they dominate the landscape and they. Uh, you know, are taking care of their teams. The Big East teams are not football powers. Uh, you know, most of them have, you know, if they have football teams at all, they're one double A teams. And I think what you're seeing here is a possible move by the Power Five schools to make sure, hey, we take care of our schools. And, you know, the schools that don't play football, we're not going to worry them much about them at all because at the end of the day, what can a St. John's or a Seton Hall or Providence do to complain. However, if you leave teams out from the Big Ten or the SEC or the Big 12, you know, they can rattle a few more fences. Mike, when you think about the tournament as well, I mean, if, if we're sitting here trying to, you know, pigeonhole a certain group of conferences, as you mentioned, the football conferences, you know, Big 12, SEC, that sounds like they don't care too much about the TV product then, because at the end of the day, TV is where the money is. I mean, people are literally only keeping their cable and streaming services in part just to watch sports. Yeah, but I think they care more about their own schools, right? I don't think they care that mm. uh, Fox might be, uh, you know, Fox isn't broadcasting the tournament, but obviously Fox holds the big uh, East, right? right. And, and they got tremendous viewership. But I don't think the people uh, in the SEC or the Big Ten care about that right now. I think they're more concerned about making sure their schools are on the national stage and their schools. I believe each school gets or each conference gets more money the deeper each school goes into the tournament. So I think they're more concerned with their own pocketbook. It doesn't matter to them that St. John's versus Seton Hall on, on a Tuesday in February draws great ratings. They're more concerned with the money they'll get from uh, advancing the tournament and having their teams in the tournament and how that benefits their team uh, going forward. Mike McGay with the Press of Lang City joining us here on the Sports Bash. Josh Eddie filling in for Mike Gill on 97.3 ESPN. Mike, sticking with the basketball, 
you know, I, I've been talking to different Sixer people this week about all the, the, the varying ranges of reports when it comes to Joel Embiid's return. And Mike, I got to be honest with you. I thought Monday's win was massive for the Sixers because this four game road trip is the equivalent of going through American Ninja Warrior and you're an out of shape person. Like, I mean, this is going to be potentially four straight losses for the 76ers as we still wait for Joel Embiid's probable, maybe hopeful, we don't know, return. Yeah, this trip right here, I believe it starts in Phoenix tonight, right? Yep. We'll, uh, we'll define or I think go a long way towards determining whether or not the Sixers are in the play-in or out of the play-in, whether they get into the main bracket as one of the top six or the way you have to play their way in. I think it's a, a decision or the same sort of obstacle the Knicks faced. Uh, the Knicks went out to the West Coast uh, and have been 3-0 and on this trip and sort of solidified their spot uh, in the actual field and not slipping back into the play-in. So I think the Sixers sort of face the same thing here. And, uh, you know, my gut would tell me that the Sixers are going to have a hard time on the road here and, and face a play-in uh, as we get towards the end of the season. Mike, do you take any any encouragement from the Sixers winning the last two games? Or do you look at it, look at it as, ah, they, they beat two teams they should beat? Uh, you know, kind of the beat two teams that they should beat, basically. I think this is going to be the key stretch right here, these four games on the West Coast, and then we'll see if the bead comes back. Now, he has been spotted on the bench. He seems like he's been around the team more. But still, again, you know, time moves quick, especially the older you get. Time moves quick, right? And today's what, March 19th, I think, or right. even March 20th. And, and, you know, I know Mike the other day, um, kind of made fun of me when I said March is almost over, but March is almost over. And yeah. if the speed is coming back the end of March, like when do we see him? When do we see him out of practice? When do we see him out there? You know, so uh, yeah, a lot of questions are around the Sixers right now. It's really, to me, a kind of, you know what they've become in my mind over the last couple of weeks or months, they've become just another NBA team for a long time. They were, you know, the process. And even when they were winning 10 games, it was the process and it was a controversy over the process. Then they had Simmons and, and, and Embiid and, and was the process working and, and you know, uh, had the process worked, uh, the debate over that. Then they had Markel Fultz and, oh, is he a flop or is he not a flop? And then they had Burner Gate and even that was interesting. Now they're just, you know, now they're just, another NBA team. They're like the Indiana Pacers. They're like, you know, this team or that team, they've got some good, they've got a really good player. A lot of NBA teams got a really good player. Uh, they've got, you know, they've got Tyrese Maxey. A lot of guys got in the NBA have a number, a solid number two guy or a talented number two guy, but they're just, they're just another team out there on the landscape trying to fight for a playoff spot uh, in the NBA right now. Mike, let's flip it over to the Phillies real quick because we're starting to get a better picture of what this team is going to look like. Yeah, we know who the big names are, you know, the Schwarbers, the Harpers, you know, guys like that. But the question of who is going to be starting in center field and then as a domino effect left field. And I got to be honest, Mike, it's starting looking more and more like Rojas is going to have to start the year at Triple A. And then what do you do in center field, Mike? Do you say Marsh in center, Whit Merrifield in left? Do you put Marsh in left and Pache in center? You know, you know what, what should the Phillies do here, Mike? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, your guess is as good as mine, but they've got to make some decisions over the next couple of, uh, you know, the next week, right? Because opening day is, uh, you know, a week from tomorrow, as hard as that is to believe, right? Uh, opening day is a week from yep. tomorrow. You know, I turned on my uh, TV, rolled over at 6 o'clock this morning, and baseball, you know, the first game of the season's already been played, right? Uh, Dodgers and Padres. Huge disappointment so far in spring training. I know I haven't been down there, but I read stuff about they're focused more on the quality of bats, his swing, but he has not hit the ball in spring training. He did not hit the ball last year in the playoffs. The other issue that would have me a little bit concerned uh, when they go to form their roster is Bryce Harper's back. You know, he needed a couple days off 
because his back was acting up a little bit. What does that mean for the start of the regular season? Does that mean that you take a Jake Cave, a guy who can play some first base and some outfield for you? Does he make the roster? So, yeah, they've got some decisions to make there. Uh, you know, in, in my heart, I think, I think they might put Rojas, try Rojas in the regular season. Just try him for two to three weeks. See if he hits at the start of the regular season. If he doesn't, they can always send him down. Uh, but yeah, it's a definite question. The questions they had at the beginning of spring training, the biggest question was, could Johan Rojas play center field, hit well enough to play center field on an everyday basis? And he certainly hasn't given them the answer that they wanted uh, so far. Finally, Mike, uh, who is going to be or who should be the Phillies closer? Take take that however you want, direction you want, because I was asked yesterday about the closer situation. And to me, I said, look, it, it should be Alvarado until it, it's not. Because to me, he's the guy with the most experience actually being successful at it. Yeah, I agree 100% there. If I was to te- if I was going to go to a closer in a consistent spot, it would be Alvarado. Now, the only factor where I wouldn't see him closing the game, if let's say there was the eighth inning and you had a pocket of left-handed hitters, you know, really good coming up, uh, like in the heart of the other team's order that I could see him going in the eighth inning. And then you can go, you know, you can mix and match in the ninth with Sir Anthony or Jeff Hoffman or even Gregory Soto in that spot. But on a night in and night out basis, uh, if I had my druthers, I'm, I'm uh, closing with Jose Alvarado. He's Mike McGarry at Press AC McGarry on the Twitter X Platt Friday on the Sports Fresh, although not this Friday because we have the NCAA tournament on. So, Mike, you get an, a day off. A day getting... off. Oh, I'm like Gil. I'm like Gil. I get some time off now. There <laughs> yeah. you go. Well, you at you least get time off for me calling you. I'm sure you'll be doing something for the press of Atlantic City on uh, Friday. Uh, ab- absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> we all can't live the life of Gil, can we? No. You know? No, we can't. I mean, I, I haven't even ever been to spring training, for goodness sake, Mike. So, I, I don't even know. Yeah, to me. And, and, you know, I've never been down either. Uh, only because, you know, I, I love the March, the basketball, you know, state high school basketball tournament, the MAC tournament, the NCAA tournament. And to me, spring training is really, there's, there's news almost the first week of the uh, spring training when everybody shows up. But other than injuries, I mean, it's really, you know, I think it's just kind of for tourists and pitchers, basically, you know. Yeah. All right, Mike, good talk with you. Talk to you soon. All right. See you later, Josh. Josh Jennick here, filling in for Mike Gill on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. Yeah, yeah, I've never been to spring training. I've never, I would like to go sometime. You know, I'm I'm not against going. It's just work-wise, there's a lot of times in my life where it, it has been, shall I call it, inconvenient for me to do something like that, right? So, that that's kind of how I am with it. You know, it's one of those deals where, you know, for me at least, you know, I'm just kind of like, well, it's not convenient with my life and what's going on to go down to Florida in the middle of March. I've never had the professional opportunity to make that you know happen, but you know, maybe one day I'll get down there. Wouldn't mind. You know, I know Mike says for tourists. Well, technically if I'm going to Florida, I am a tourist, right? I'm going on vacation. So sure. Why not? Let's, let's prop me up at, uh, clear water at spring training sometime and uh, have a good time. Why not? Not today. I'm here hanging out with you on 97.3 ESPN. Still to come, we have another opportunity for you to qualify for the Phillies trip, the Baltimore contest coming up in about 10 minutes from now, as well as on this day in NCAA tournament history and more your texts at 609-403-0973 and your DMs into the 97.3 ESPN mobile app powered by First Bank of Seattle City. Listen to all the madness. Wide open. March Madness is coming to 97.3 ESPN. Go for the pulse and the pools. Go for the hot streak and the hot tubs. Go for a relaxing massage and for wild nights with your entourage. Go to play all day and to dance all night. Go for the rooms with the ocean views that go on forever. Go for paradise with a pair of dice.
go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Must be 21 or older. Party responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Happy spring from Broadleaf's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. It's that time of year to schedule your spring AC maintenance before the busy season arrives. Join their family comfort plan for savings on your spring tune-up. Plus, get priority scheduling and same-day service all summer long. Did you know it also covers plumbing service calls, too? Call Broadleys today to sign up for the Family Comfort Plan at 609-390-3907 or visit broadleys.net. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. With GMF financing, qualified buyers excludes Corvette, excludes prior sales. If you're waiting for the best deal on a new or pre-owned vehicle, stop waiting and listen to these incredible deals at Ben & Chevrolet during March Markdown, where you can save up to 20% on new Chevys. Yes, up to 20% savings with GM supplier employee pricing. Plus, you keep all the rebates. No games, no gimmicks. Just the best offer you'll find anywhere. Plus, there's available 1.9% financing. And Bennett is paying a whopping $10,000 cash for any clunker towards any pre-owned vehicle in stock. That, that is, is a minimum, minimum 10 grand, grand regardless, regardless of condition or mile. Can you imagine how much more you'll get for a good quality trade? While Bennett Chevy offers the best deals you can find on any newer pre-owned vehicle, you can always count on a wonderful combine experience with our non-commissioned sales team who are paid on your satisfaction, not how much you spend. Nobody beats a Bennett deal. Nobody. Together, let's drive at Bennett Chevrolet, Egg Harbor Township, and BennettChevy.com. At Target, our prices for Easter are so low, you can put all your eggs in one basket. Surprise them with Target-exclusive favorite day treats, like our unique chocolate bunny and a cute basket, all from just $4. Add in some fun with a six-pack of bubbles, 50-piece sidewalk chalk, and super soft stuffed animals, all from $5. And get great family pics with new Easter looks. It's easy with women's and girls' dresses for only $20 and under. Low prices on everything for Easter? Now that's Target. Do you love a good cigar almost as much as your family? Well, maybe that's an exaggeration, but you can find that perfect cigar at Smoker's Haven. With five New Jersey locations, Smoker's Haven has the finest selection of cigars in the area, like Ashton, My Father's, Romeo and Julieta, Monte Cristo, and more. All from the finest tobacco leaves and hand-rolled by the world's finest cigar makers. All locations are fully open. Stop in and let them help you find the perfect cigar to pair with your life. See all they have and their locations at SmokersHavenNJ.com. Gonna feel a puff of air. Jong's Optometry oh. has set their sights on staffing up. Try the next line. Hey, Kim, can you tell our two o'clock we're running 15 behind? Sorry, we're a bit backed up today. He needs an optometric now, technician 20. to keep an eye on it all. Where are the dilation drops? Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Listen up, New Jersey and Philly car buyers. Matlat Mitsubishi has only three questions for you. Do you have a job? Do you want a new car? Do you want to zero down? Why would you buy a used car or pay high interest rates? If you have a job clearing four fifty dollars per week, Matt Black Mitsubishi wants to approve you. So bring any trade and drive home in a brand new Mitsubishi, like the all-new 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander, with zero down and 0% financing for 60 months, plus a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited warranty for the price of most used cars with zero down. 
Mountain. Flat Mitsubishi keeps the rates low. With a four-day love-it-or-leave-it return policy, you can't go wrong. Simply met Platt Mitsubishi. Rate qualifications exist with approved credit. 1666 per 1,000 finance. Fund in stock 2023. Mitsubishi Outlanders. Not all will qualify. Go to mattplattmitsubishi.com for complete details or call 844-946-2315. Price includes all costs to be paid by consumer, except for licensing, registration, and taxes. Expires 4124. Matt Platt Mitsubishi in the heart of Glassboro for 30 years. It's the Sports Bash with Mike Gill. Do I have everybody's attention now? On 97.3 ESPN and the 3 ESPN 3. Today's edition of On This Day in Tournament History is being brought to you by the New Jersey Lottery. Quick draw from New Jersey Lottery is now Quick Draw Progressive with a free shot at winning a rolling jackpot. There's a free chance to win the growing jackpot every time you play. On this day in 2010, the number one Kansas Jayhawks lost to Northern Iowa in the NCAA tournament round of 62 and brackets everywhere were burned, busted, and DOA. Hopefully, people don't make that same mistake this year. I'm telling you right now, Kansas is losing in the first round to Stanford this year. Yeah, I just gave you a pick at 2.51 in the afternoon on a Wednesday. And, of course, this moment in NCAA tournament history, memory is being brought to the future lottery again. Quick draw progressive. Free shot and winning a rolling jackpot is a free chance to win the rolling jackpot every time you play with the New Jersey Lottery. The Kansas is about, you know, their best player with colors. Um, they're playing at altitude. Stanford's going to run them out of the building. They're going to run out of the They're going to have problems. It's going to be a bad showing for them. I mean, if you're not, if you're not, hyper intense about wagering you know you want to just throw against the spread for Sanford you can do that but I mean you might as well take the, the money line in that case Kansas is not going to look good in this tournament even if they found way to get past Sanford they're going to get crushed by somebody else along the way uh Tom from Margate chimes in on the text board at 609-403-0973 says hey Josh happy hump day can you confirm or deny a rumor I heard that Eric Dixon uh, chose not to play in Villanova's NIT game. If this is true, I was 100% respect for him. Another member of the Snowflake generation. Happy March Madness. Go Villanova. A couple of things, Todd, from Margate. One, only you would be texting in and asking about a Villanova game in the NIT tournament. <laughs> okay? Only you. That's how much you love Nova. Uh, Listen, everything I've heard that Eric Dixon says he's going to play. I, I haven't heard or seen anything. I, I thought the last thing I heard was that he said that no injury could keep him from playing. So that's what I heard. I mean, if there's something different out there, I would love to know the source of it. You know, it, it goes back to a lot of things in media. You know, I always try to tell people about, you know, I know I look and sound young, but I'm really not. You know, my background, I was a freelance newspaper writer when I was 19 years old. It was my first uh, media job. And, well, 18 turning 19, I should say. So it's actually even younger than that. And, you know, one of the things you had to do as a newspaper writer and one of the things you had to do when you were in college, working for the college newspaper or if you, you know, wrote a, a research paper, you had to cite your sources. You had to have, uh, you had to corroborate your information from somewhere. And, you know, one of the problems we have in today's society is that everyone just vomits information out there all the time. And there's nobody double checking, triple checking, seeing where the sourcing comes from. You know, I would rather get it right than be the first person to report something. There are so many times that I have heard people say, did you see this story? And I say, well, where'd you get it from? And then they tell me the source of the information. And I was like, eh. Let's wait for somebody else to confirm it or deny it. And if you get maybe two or three people saying all the same thing, then yeah, you can ride with it. You know, aside from Adam Schefter and a couple other reporters, there's really nobody in the world today that you can trust without a shadow of a doubt. Like John Clark, NBC Sports Philadelphia, I think maybe he's arguably one of the most trusted, reliable people. But at the end of the day, a lot of the stuff online is very untrustworthy, unreliable, and you can't roll with it at all. 
That sounder means this is one of the final opportunities that you have to qualify for the Phillies trip to Baltimore contest. Of course, if you are a winner, you get to go to the Philly sports trips on a trip of a lifetime. Father's Day weekend, go to Baltimore, a incredible tailgate menu of food that will blow your mind. Listen, this deal is worth hundreds of dollars to go for the trip, the tickets, the tailgate. But you can go if you are caller number seven at 609-573-3776. 609-573-3776. Today is the final day that you can qualify. And this is your first chance today to qualify for the Phillies trip to Baltimore. 609 573 3776. The field is set, and your bracket predictions are hopefully done. The 2024 Big Dance tips off with first four games from Dayton. Then on Thursday, all day, first round action gets underway. Make sure you don't miss any of the action. Stay tuned for Western One's exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's Tournament right here. Listen to all the madness. Oh, my goodness. March Madness right here on 97.3 ESPN. Champion Exteriors. Champion, the one you call first. Lord invest of the best in Jersey Shores. For roofing and siding, windows and doors. 24 month financing, new payments, new interest. Your certified GAF elite contractors. Champion Dutch Exteriors. Champion Exteriors. Champion, the one you call first. My wife and I both, we ended up mildly sick for a few months and the nasal congestion was probably the worst part. I had like a post nasal drip, just super congested all the time. We were taking everything we possibly could, but nothing really worked. Kyrie was miserable until a friend recommended Navage. Navage offers immediate drug-free congestion relief, flushing your nasal passages with refreshing saline and sucking out mucus, germs, and other airborne irritants. Don't live in misery this cold season. Use Navage so you can breathe easier, sleep better, and feel your best right away. The biggest thing Navage has done has completely cleaned out my nasal passages. It, it was from the first use. I was able to just clear out anything that was stopping me from breathing correctly. Navage helps me clear the way, literally clear the way for me to operate better in the rest of my life. Experience the Navage difference yourself. Navage is available at navage.com or at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. Navage, N-A-V, A-G-E. It's buyback March at Matt Flat Nissan. So bring any trades because AJ the trade man wants to buy your vehicle today. AJ pays $500 more than CarMax so you get more dough for your ride. Brand new Sentra for just $199 per month lease with zero security deposit. And only Matt Flat Nissan has a four-day love it or leave it return policy. Oh yeah, it's on at Matt Flat Nissan. Or drive home with zero down and zero interest for 72 months. Plus, current Nissan owners get $1,000 owner loyalty cash back on every clearly marked new Nissan in stock. Have a job clearing 450 per week? We want to approve you today. And AJ wants your trade, but only at Matt Black Nissan. Oh, we qualifications exist with proof credits. Thirteen eighty nine per thousand finance. Not all qualify. Go to MacLeodNissan.com for complete details or calling four four nine one seven four seven five eight. Price includes all costs to be paid by consumer except for licensing, registration, and taxes. Centra Fin R Y Q O one zero five nine. Reselling price twenty four five seventy nine. Expires four six twenty four. It's on at Medlat Nissan on the Black Horse Pike. Harbor Township. I feel good. Dad, are you singing to your cereal? Yes, I am. Like I knew that I would. No, no, no. A dance too? Come on, Ava. Silk almond milk. Starts the morning on a high note. Yeah. Oh. Songs, dances, and dad jokes. So good. So good. I got you. Mm. Silk almond milk. With calcium, vitamins A, D, and E. Feel plenty good. When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moments. It's the anticipation of another face card, the thrill of an extra spin, and the pure joy of a jackpot. It's all your favorite games at your fingertips. Plus, get up to $1,000 casino bonus back if you're down in the first 24 hours. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. 
bet parks. Must be 21 in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Ohio, or Maryland. Gambling problem? 1 800 Gambler. One night, one stage. Woo! Country music's hottest supergroup. The Frontman. Featured. Lead singer of Restless Hearts. Tim Rushlow, formerly of Little Texas. Yeah, Friday, March 29th, the Excite Center at Parks Casino. The voices that brought you three decades of number one country hits live. On sale now at parkscasino.com. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose, oily stools, may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Do mice, ants, and termites have you paranoid about spring? Visit vikingpest.com for a fast, free quote. Viking Pest was voted Forbes Top 10 Best Pest Control. Technicians in over 40 years of service. No pest can be the Viking. Visit VikingPest.com. South Jersey's official play by play home of the Eagles, Sixers, and Flyers. At zero point would I ever consider not being a fan of the 97.3 ESPN, WBMJ, WBMJ HD, Bill Bill, Atlantic City, a South Square Pizza Station, serving all of South Jersey. This is the Sports Bash with Mike Gill on 97.3 ESPN and the 97.3 ESPN free mobile app. Now live from inside the Ocean Casino Resort Studio, here's Mike Gill. Over the 3 o'clock hour of the Sports Bash, Oscar and Tony for Mike Gill here on 97.3 ESPN. Flyers got back on the winning track last night, but it was not without some drama. Apparently, the short story agent was more than a Flyers thing because we literally had a Sixers insider yesterday and he didn't understand why Sean Couturier was being all scratched. So we go to the man who hopefully has the answer for what is going on with the Flyers. The Flyers broke an eight-game losing. Toronto Maple Leafs last night. Kevin Durst, our Flyers insider from 97.3 ESPN, ESPN.com, joins us right here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. Kevin, welcome in. How you doing today? I'm doing well, Josh. How are you? Doing pretty good. So can you help people out there understand why? Why is Sean Couturier getting benched? Loaded question to start me off today, huh, Josh? <laughs> I mean, there's there's a Kevin, whole. Do you expect anything less from me? No, of course not. Um, there's there's a whole bunch of layers to this because, look, in fairness, from Sean Couturier's side of things, he hasn't been playing well of late. It's it doesn't make him the worst player on the team by any stretch, but he had one goal in the last 27 games. You're kind of looking for some offensive production, and I don't think it was anything that um, like I don't find it to be anything that. You couldn't. You you were singling him out on this. There's more than just Sean Couturier that was not playing with some consistency or anything like that. So that that's one thing that has to be kind of factored in right from the beginning. Is it wasn't just exclusive to Sean Couturier. If nothing else, it seemed like more of a message play from John Tortorella that you know if if we're not looking at status or veteran or rookie or anything like that, anybody on the team at any point in time can be subject to this kind of treatment. Maybe that's the messaging behind it. There becomes the way that it was handled, though, too, because it seemed like from both sides, you kind of got different details of things. Sean Couturier is telling you he's frustrated with the way he's been handled lately or things have been handled lately. Didn't really have much information about why he was scratched and kind of was left asking for answers as well. His response to the media yesterday was. I know as much as you, he needs, he said he needs more. That's what John Tortorella told the media on Monday. So the decisions made that he's not going to play. And John Tortorella did not have a pregame media availability yesterday. They sent Rocky Thompson out to do the pregame instead. And then after the game, when Tortorella did address the media, he wasn't taking any questions regarding anything with Sean Couturier. So that kind of shows where the communication lacks already. 
They And listen, John Tortorella doesn't owe us anything, and neither does Sean Couturier. But if Couturier is questioning, I don't even know why. That does indicate that there is a potential barrier here. I, I think this is a case, if there's a case where two things can be true at the same time, that Couturier wasn't playing well, so you can't just overlook that fact. Certainly, if you're trying to sit there and make the merit, I'm icing the best 20 guys that we have, taking Sean Couturier out of the lineup as your captain and your leader is definitely a head scratcher. It's going, And that's why it draws attention from, uh, from people, that it's going to be one of these things where it's like, how do you scratch your captain? And I really think one of the biggest ag- angles of it is the timing. There's 14 games left in the regular season and you're locked in a playoff race. And this is the time that you choose to send this kind of a message and take your captain out of the picture. That is really interesting timing. And I think that that is why it's even more of a message sent. I just think that maybe there were some things execution wise that probably weren't handled as well as they could have been. So, you know, is it fair to assume then that, you know, bridges can be mended. This is not a long-term issue and that you know Katori will get back on the ice flyers will get back to business and this will only be like a footnote in the season you hope so because the more that it would linger then the more that creates an issue you think about kind of the i i think i think about the in between of the two of two different situations kind of because this sounds like the start of something that was experienced last season it sounds a little bit like kevin hayes to an extent doesn't it like Here's, you know, he's out of the lineup. There's a reason he's out of the lineup. It creates some friction and then it ultimately doesn't end well. There's the other side of it, though, where you take a guy like Morgan Frost. I, the first thing I thought of when I saw that Sean Couturier was going to be one of the extras, was going to be scratched, was a game the Flyers had earlier this season against Columbus where they scratched Morgan Frost. And it was the first time I believe this season that Cam Atkinson was a scratch. And as much as Cam Atkinson hadn't been playing well, and there was certainly some friction between, John Tortorella and Morgan Frost at that time as well. I didn't think that the guys that were going into the lineup created your best opportunity to win a game that should have been two points. They ended up losing the game in a shootout three to two and instead didn't get one. And every point that they can get at this point, no matter where it was in the season is critical. So I kind of thought that that took away your best opportunity. That was my first thought again, seeing Couturier possibly out of the lineup is, you know, what's the alternative here? Because the alternative is probably still not better. On, at least on paper, it's not for sure. So you're, you know, you're kind of in a position where you could sabotage this result. And right now you need points. So that's one of the curiosities I have. And I wonder if the situation resolves itself the way that Frost's did. Frost ultimately called a meeting basically with John Tortorella, asked to go talk to him, wanted to kind of discuss things. They kind of cleared the air over the situation. And Frost has been one of the team's best players lately. So it does have a positive impact. And it looks like it comes out of this thing on the other side. And is resolved. That can certainly happen here. And I think Sean Couturier is enough of a consummate pro to do that. And ultimately I think that that's where it will get to, because I I think there's for one, there's too much history between Couturier and the flyers as a whole. I think that Tortorella knows the importance of Sean Couturier as well. And that's why he was a leader in the first place. It's a really fascinating timeline to go from February 14th, kind of out of the blue. Here's your new captain after for months going back to last season, even John Tortorella kept saying, I'm not naming a captain. There's no captain. I'm not, don't ask me. I don't want to talk about the captaincy thing. All of a sudden you have a captain. And basically within a month, it was, I think total was 34, 35 days total. Not only did Couturier's ice time start to dip and he was basically playing on the fourth line at different points. He was then out of the lineup altogether. That's pretty much unheard of. You just don't see that happen, especially for a team that's in a playoff race. So Hopefully this thing does get resolved sooner rather than later and becomes more of a non-issue. But certainly right now it's a bit of an issue because sure, maybe the message sending and everything like that worked yesterday and it it got them a win and they got two points and it keeps this thing moving along. But you certainly are taking a risk in making an example out of the captain of the team. And especially also in a time frame where the biggest thing that I took away from the trade deadline that just happened and, and the Couturier captaincy announcement also all kind of happening within two, three weeks of each other was the locker room culture was one of the biggest talking points of the entire team that this is the reason why Scott Lawton wasn't traded because it wasn't just about fair value. It's more than fair value. That's how valuable he is to the locker room. And Nick Sealer gets a contract extension because from a locker room standpoint, that's what we want to have here. And Sean Couturier is named your captain and Travis Konechny gets a letter along with Lawton because they're vital to the locker room culture. So anything that puts that at risk and potentially damages that maybe a questionable decision and it is a gamble. So 
It worked last night. We'll see if that continues in the future, and we'll see if it also resolves itself between Couturier and Tortorella, ultimately. Talk with the Flyers insider Kevin Durso from 97.3 ESPN.com at Kevin underscore Durso on the Twitter X platform and joining us here on the Sports Bash. Josh Heddick filling in for Mike Gill on 97.3 ESPN. Kevin, if I go a little big picture with you because, you know, we had the chance to talk to Flyers president Keith Jones Saturday in the locker room when I was co-hosted with Billy Schwein. And one of the questions I asked Jonesy was that I said, hey, you know, you've been in this city a long time, you know, what is it like for you to be in charge of the team that you could basically consider maybe the best team in the city? And he got kind of chuckled and was like, Oh, it's a, it's a nice thought, you know, that we didn't expect to be here. And, you know, he wasn't saying to be, you know, disrespectful, just being, you know, like, like, you know, like, like he was basically saying like, it's not something we were like thinking was going to happen, you know? So for you, you know, what is your perspective on the flyers? Because right now, the Sixers are, are a mess, okay? We have no idea when Joel Embiid is coming back. The Phillies are a week away from opening day. The Eagles are, are slowly, the, the new cycle is kind of slowing down from free agency. You could argue that if the Sixers and the Flyers are in the postseason right now, more people think the Flyers are going to win a game than the Sixers at this point. So what is your take on the state of a Flyers team that nobody expected to be here on March 20th? Yeah, it, well, it's certainly uncharted territory a little bit for, for me, even because the last time I remember this kind of being the way it was, was probably 2020, right up before the pandemic hit. And then kind of the way the playoff bubble went too, because that was the last time that the, you know, the Sixers were in the playoffs at that time, the Sixers got swept right out of the playoffs. The Flyers won around kind of kept, mo- you know, kept moving that thing forward, it took a second round series to the, to a game seven, there was a buzz about it. And you know, I certainly haven't felt that buzz for the past three, four seasons up until now. This season kind of has been building towards it. It does start a little bit with the off ice stuff, too. You know, you you kind of rebuild this thing from from that perspective and get some, you know, n- new but familiar faces into the picture that people seem to trust to this point. And, you know, their play is also relatable, I think. You know, that they, they come out and they play a style that isn't necessarily pretty, isn't necessarily, you know, the most skilled and makes you think they're the biggest contender, but they have a style that I think people do resonate with. And, you know, when you consider everybody else's situation and the way that it ended for the Eagles this season or the way that the Sixer season has gone lately, yeah, you know, people are going to look at the, the ultimate thing, which is winning, you know, and, and if a team's winning, they kind of start to gravitate towards it. So they're a fun story right now, big picture wise. It's really early to tell in this whole thing because it's basically chapter one of the new era, you know, and if if chapters two and three go a lot like this, then I think you're really building something special because it, it should grow. You're seeing growth from certain people. And, and I think that that's a big part of the equation. But it's really too soon to tell how sustainable this season was, com- you know, and compared to what it will be in the future. There's certainly some bright things that are on the horizon. When you think of, you know, think of their draft picks, for example, a, a Matt Vay Mishov coming over would be, you know, could be transformative to this franchise in a handful of years. But you got to get there, and you got to continue to see that maybe by the time he gets here, this thing has grown even further, and it's not just what's going on this season, but beyond this season. Don't get me wrong, though. The idea that there's there's 13 games left in the regular season and they are in a playoff position that was not even on the radar. And it's exciting to kind of have that on the radar. And I think that that's that's where Keith Jones is coming from, for sure. I, I know Jones, he didn't think like that coming into this whole thing, that that there was going to be a lot more work to do and there would probably be more growing pains than there have been this year. But don't but don't get it mistaken that they aren't enjoying every minute of this and they are invested fully in where this could go this season. It doesn't mean that they're a prime contender for the Stanley Cup yet or anything like that. But getting in is half of the battle and they have done their part to this point. I was actually talking about this fairly recently with somebody. And, you know, the last time they weren't occupying a playoff spot was the morning of December 4th. So they've gone on three to four months now of being in a playoff spot there. That's enough consistency to really feel comfortable with, you know, where they've been and where this is going. So hopefully that's uh, a big part of what the last few weeks hold in the season. You mentioned the final 13 games and being in a playoff spot. How important was the Toronto win last night, considering they had not beaten an Eastern conference team since what was it? March 7th when they played Florida. So 
I mean, there was a stretch there where the only team in you, 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 you beat the Sharks, but they're not even the Eastern Conference team. So, like, you mm-hmm. finally have gotten a win in this gauntlet of games, and you only have so many games left in the month. So, you know, from your perspective, how big was last night? Yeah, it was, it was massive. And in this 10 game stretch that they're on that started with that Florida game, I mean, you couldn't have started it any better than beating Florida and getting two points there. That kind of made the next game. And I know that the next game against Tampa after that was dreadful to watch. It was just awful. Seven, nothing loss, but they go into that San Jose game. And that was pretty much the one outlier of the group that was like, you know, Hey, you know, get two points here because this is the bottom feeder of the group. So you have to get two points. It wasn't pretty, but they did. So, Mm -hmm. okay. You've gotten four points so far in three games. That's a really good start. And it kind of felt like there was some missed opportunities. They were relatively competitive. You know, they fell behind three, nothing to Toronto in that first game that they had against them in this stretch and kept it close though, through the second period. And it all unraveled really quickly. The Boston game was the same way. So you got to a point where you were starting to come up on a set of games here where it was like, you can't just let this go by the wayside and get nothing for it. You have to gain some points here because as fun as it's been watching the scoreboard lately and seeing how everything else has shaken out and worked in their favor for the most part, it wasn't going to be like that forever. And sure enough, right before this game happens, Washington closes the gap to one and Detroit starts to win a couple of games. And it's like, okay, here comes some of that pressure. You're going to have to earn points. So getting those two is huge. I've been of the belief that over this 10 game stretch, they need 10 points total and being through six of them with six points is a good place to be with four to go trying to get four more out of it. I think that if they can do that, they should be able to relatively maintain that spot. If they aren't in the playoff spot, then they would be maybe a point out because of that. That's the right place to be with the games that they have coming up after this. And to think that by that point, four more games down the, down the line here, there'll be nine to go. You'll be in single digits for what's left. And again, to be in a playoff spot at that stage of things would be massive as well. So I I really, like the fact that they came out and had, you know, really from the start too, to score 19 seconds into that game, to set the tone score in the first minute of the second period to score again before the period was out to have a three, nothing lead. Toronto gave you a fight in the third period. It got probably way closer than anybody wanted to see, but you held off that, that charge at the end and, and got the two points that matter and, and talk about timing too, because at the same time, and I'm trying my best to kind of multitask with that, the Detroit game was wrapping up pretty much at the exact same time. And Detroit went from get basically looking like they were going to get nothing against Columbus to tying the game with 12 seconds left and winning it in the first minute of overtime. So that just goes to show you how quickly things can change in this playoff race. And it was a huge two points for them. And it's, it's hopefully the start of maybe a couple more games like this to come during this final four of the 10 game stretch, because this, this is this to me was the defining stretch of the rest of the season. And so far to get three wins in it to this point is holding your own to this point, And it's allowed you to hold on to that spot. Kevin, before I let you go, I want to touch on one more point with the flyers with you is well, the other big part of last night was Samuel Arison. You know, he had been pulled from two games in recent weeks. And last night, he finally stood his own. And I thought that stopping that one breakaway was a huge moment for him because I, I like, every, look, let's be realistic. We all thought that the Toronto was going to score on the breakaway there, right? <laughs> like, no, everyone thought, oh, no, here we go. But he stood his ground. He got the save. He kicked it away. I thought that was a big moment. Could, could that be the moment to really get him back on track because he has been shaky in recent weeks. Yeah, you hope so because you know, he's he's either he's been hit or miss really, right? You know, the, he had that game to start this stretch against Florida too where he was outstanding and that's a big part right. of the reason you win that game. He was a big part of the reason you win this game too. I mean, they've got so much firepower Toronto does. So, and you saw how quickly like Harrison played both of the other games against Toronto or at least started both of them. The first one that they played against Toronto was in Toronto and all of a sudden Austin Matthews takes over and good luck stopping some of the shots he takes. Right. You get lit up in the first period of, of the next one. So I thought the fact that he came out of the first period pretty cl- you know clean and didn't have, have ha- not allowing anything was a big step in the right direction. And then he maintained it for a little bit. And obviously, look, Toronto made their push in the third period, and I didn't really see any particular situation there where Arison was at fault. He made the saves he had to. And you know, part of part of playing these 
playoff style games. And this, that's what they pretty much are at this point. All of these games against playoff teams might as well be playoff games for the Flyers already. Part of that is getting some things to go your way. Toronto hit five posts in the game. So I hope that Sam Harrison was doing a little bit of what Mark Andre Fleury does sometimes and turning around and thanking your goalposts because y- <laughs> you needed to in this game because that sometimes game of inches, you know, you see, you know, Matthews hit one, Nylander hit one on a bit of a partial breakaway. They, th- those are the guys that will burn you for that team. And when it just doesn't go that way, sometimes you're talking about inches. You take that and you, you move on to the next one. And Harrison kept doing that. And he's certainly going to need to down the stretch here too, you know, and the, the next couple games that he has, you know, I would assume he's getting the Carolina game for sure. And then, you know, one of these two this upcoming weekend, probably Florida, because he's really had Florida's number lately. And you've seen Felix Sandstrom give you minutes against Boston. So I think that that probably plays into the decision making as well. But certainly you're going to lean on Harrison, especially down the stretch. And this is really the time to see what he's made of. And he's had several games where he's shown he's definitely capable of this position, but he's had some shaky moments as well. So getting it locked down is really key to where the flyers are going. And it, you know, it really starts from that position for the most part. And that's kind of why you've seen the other team struggle a little bit that are chasing the flyers in the playoff picture that if they don't get the goaltending some nights, they'll maybe find a way to lose a game. And the flyers have found a way to lose some games because of goaltending and defense, but they've won a few games because of goaltending as well. So certainly a key to the stretch run of the season, the season. He's Kevin Durso, our Flyers insider from 973 ESPN.com. Flyers back in action tomorrow against the Carolina Hurricanes. Hear that game on our sister station, Rock 1041 in the Rock 1041 mobile app, as we'll have March Madness for 12 straight hours tomorrow here on 973 ESPN. Kevin, appreciate you jumping on today. Keep up the great work, man. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. Josh Hennig here, filling in for Mike Gill on the Sports Bash. 3 o'clock hour being brought to you by Broadley's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Broadley's is your trusted source for heating and plumbing services, installation for generations. Call them at 609-390-3907 or visit them online at broadleys.net. Like I said before, it's wild that the Flyers have ascended to being one of the teams you have to watch and talk about again in the city of Philadelphia is absolutely wild. All right, we'll check back on the text board in just a bit. 609-403-0973. Your DMs into the 973 ESPN mobile app powered by First Bank of Seattle. So to come, another opportunity for you to qualify for the Phillies trip to Baltimore like Gene did from Dennis Township. She is in, and so can you. If you are caller number seven, when you hear the sounder coming up in about uh, roughly about 32 minutes from now is the next time when the sounder goes off. Also still to come, football forward with Jeff Mosher, state of the Eagles roster as the offseason for the NFL is kind of slowing down. It's kind of quieting down. Things are kind of evening themselves out again. We'll also talk with Danny Ryan for his five with Danny Rye coming up at the four o'clock hour, a Weinberg Wednesday, 973 ESPN sports columnist. Dave Weinberg joins me usually on game night each Wednesday. He jumps on an hour earlier coming up at 525 tonight. Also, we'll hear from you guys throughout the show, your thoughts on all the things. Plus, um, my March Madness picks. I got some picks. I got some thoughts. I know Jeff from Ocean City has been bugging me on the text board for some final four picks. I'll get to that a little bit later in the show. But coming up next, the UFC is returning to Atlantic City for the first time in six years. And the headliner is a New Jersey fi- fighter. We will hear from one of the top women's flyweights in the world coming up next as she gets ready to headline UFC Atlantic City on March 30th at Boardwalk Hall. I'm Josh Henning, and this is the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN FM and 97.3 ESPN mobile app powered by First Bank of Seattle City. It's the Sports Bash with Mike Gill. And I am the voice of the voiceless. On 97.3 ESPN and the 97.3 ESPN free mobile app. Your luxury BMW experience.
iconic. There are too many things I like about it. I don't know if I can finish the thought. Bring on the spice and order the Chick-fil-A Spicy Deluxe Sandwich on the Chick-fil-A app today. Real guests paid for their testimonial. Progressive presents advice on new teen drivers. You know, the hardest part about whoa, teaching your teen to drive is the chafing from the seatbelt. But the best part is the grip strength you build in your knuckles. Okay, now let's pull out of the driveway. Here's another tip. Offset a chunk of the cost of adding a teen to your insurance with Progressive's Teen Driver Discount and get a break from the break. Progressive Casual Teen Insurance Company and affiliates not available in all states or situations. I feel good. Dad, are you singing to your cereal? Yes, I am. Like I knew that I would not. No, a dance too? Come on, Ava. Silk almond milk. Starts the morning on a high note. Yeah. Oh. Songs, dances, and dad jokes. So good. So good. I got you. Mm. Silk almond milk. With calcium, vitamins A, D, and E. Feel plenty good. When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moment. It's the confidence and underdogs covering, the tension before a clutch turnover, and the pride of a parlay paying off. It's another chance to win big with all day action. Plus, win your first $10 bet and get $125 in sports bonus bets. You play for fun. You love to win. You bet. Bet parks. Six twenty one in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Ohio, or Maryland. Gambling problem? One eight hundred gambling. Parks Casino. This is how you win. Action, great dining, and entertainment. Don't miss these world class headliners coming to the Excite Center inside Parks Casino. Femmes of Rock, May seventeenth, and Almost Queen, June fourteenth. For tickets and a complete list of upcoming shows, visit ParksCasino.com. Parks Casino, this is how you win. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season, you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a Samsung Galaxy A14 included when you buy an extended Silver Unlimited plan. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Switch to Straight Talk. Find us at Walmart and StraightTalk.com. For network management practices, visit StraightTalk.com. Device offer ends 4-14-24. Taxes and fees apply. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by Abvi. Ask Sherwin-Williams during the March Spring Sale, March 15th through the 25th, and get 35% off paints and stains with prices starting at $28.92. That means 35% off our most popular color family, blue. Psychologists have found it to be soothing and relaxing, which makes it especially great for bedrooms and bathrooms. And of course, get 35% off all of our other colors. Stop the sale online or visit your neighborhood Sherwin-Williams store. Retail sales only. Some exclusions apply. See store for details. My wife and I both, we ended up mildly sick for a few months and the nasal congestion was probably the worst part. I had like a post-nasal drip, just super congested all the time. We were taking everything we possibly could, but nothing really worked. Kyrie was miserable until a friend recommended Navage. Navage offers immediate drug-free congestion relief, flushing your nasal passages with refreshing saline and sucking out mucus, germs, and other airborne irritants. Don't live in misery this cold season. Use Navage so you can breathe easier, sleep better, and feel your best right away. The biggest thing Navage has done has completely cleaned out my nasal passages. It, it was from the first use. I was able to just clear out anything that was stopping me from breathing correctly. Navage helps me clear the way literally clear the way for me to operate better in the rest of my life. Experience the Navaj difference yourself. Navaj is available at Navaj.com or at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. Navaj, N-A-V, 
A-G-E. With GMF Financing, you qualify buyers. Excludes Corvette, excludes prior sales. If you're waiting for the best deal on a newer pre-owned vehicle, stop waiting and listen to these incredible deals at Bennett Chevrolet during March Markdown, where you can save up to 20% on new Chevys. Yes, up to 20% savings with GM supplier employee pricing. Plus, you keep all the rebates. No games, no gimmicks. Just the best offer you'll find anywhere. Plus, there's available 1.9% financing. And Bennett is paying a whopping $10,000 $10,000 cash for any clunker towards any pre-owned vehicle in stock. That, that is, is a minimum 10, 10 grand regardless of condition or mile. Can you imagine how much more you'll get for a good quality trade? While Bennett Chevy offers the best deals you can find on any newer pre-owned vehicle, you can always count on a wonderful combine experience with our non-commissioned sales team. We're paid on your satisfaction, not how much you spend. Nobody beats a Bennett deal. Nobody. Together, let's drive at Bennett Chevrolet, Egg Harbor Township, and Bennett Chevy. Chevy.com. At Target, our prices for Easter are so low, you can put all your eggs in one basket. Surprise them with Target exclusive favorite day treats, like our unique chocolate bunny and a cute basket, all from just $4. Add in some fun with a six pack of bubbles, 50 piece sidewalk chalk, and super soft stuffed animals, all from $5. And get great family pics with new Easter looks. It's easy with women's and girls' dresses for only $20 and under. Low prices on everything for Easter? Now that's Target. Make the new quick draw for Give it up for the rolling jackpot. The jackpot keeps rolling, rolling, jackpot rolling. Right. Quick Draw is now Quick Draw Progressive with a free shot at winning a rolling jackpot with every play. Quick Draw. Jackpot. Jackpot. Quick Draw. Play today. Play Quick Draw Progressive today. Anything can happen in Jersey. Must be 18 year old to buy a lottery ticket. Please play responsibly. If you're somebody who knows a gambling problem, call 1 800 Gambler. You're listening to The Sports Bash with Mike Gill on 97.3 ESPN and the free mobile app. Josh Eddie Philly from Mike Gill to Hump Day Wednesday here on 97.3 ESPN FM. You know, when you guys usually hear me on game night each day at 6 o'clock, Monday through Friday, Obviously, we talk about UFC fights throughout the year, but it's been a while since the UFC was back in Atlantic City. Six years, in fact. And the last time the UFC was in Atlantic City, well, there was a New Jersey fighter on that card. Frankie Edgar, one of the final wins of his Hall of Fame career, was in Atlantic City. And following in that tradition, another UFC fighter from New Jersey will be on the card March 30th. A four wall call in Atlantic City, New Jersey's own Aaron Blanchfield, one of the best women's flyweights on the planet, and she joins me right now here on 97.3 ESPN. Aaron, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. How are you? Doing pretty good. So, for you, what does it mean for you to be the main event at four wall call in Atlantic City on March 30th? Oh, it's awesome, you know. I mean, I'm in my pro debut, uh, I think in like 2018 in Atlantic City, and I haven't fought there since, but to come back and, and headline a U.S. card in Atlantic City, it's going to be awesome. When you think about the trajectory of your career, because you mentioned you got your first fight in Atlantic City with Dave Fury, you think about from then to now, you know, you have been on an, an incredible rise. Has, has your career gone the way you expected, or has it been you know, I, I feel like I did always expect that out of myself. Um, you know, I knew I could keep winning each fight, I focus on each fight, and, and win it, like, as much as like, that in front of me, that it's just going to move quick. Um, I feel like that's what I've done. Looking back on some of the fights recently, you have fought some very, very tough fighters, and you've been able to handle them in a way that I don't think anybody expected when you did against Holly McCann or Jessica and Plaz or Talia Santos. When you think about those like, what was the biggest key for you to come out and handle your business the way you have? Um, you know, I feel like it's just staying focused at the top of the because, you know, each fight has, like, its own, uh, like, things that come with it, like Molly, the whole crowd is for her, with Andrade, she was, like, short notice, uh, fight, and she was, like, a former champ, but Molly, I was all the way in Singapore. Um, I think really staying focused on my training, keeping back in hand, um, and just knowing uh, what I got to do when I'm in there and, and staying focused. Speaking of focus, you've been training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu what seems like a, almost your entire life at this point. 
How has training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu impacted you as a fighter? Because I always tell people a lot of times that, you know, you want your your kids, you know, to get into martial arts because it helps develop discipline. It helps them develop focus. So how has Jiu-Jitsu impacted you? Oh, it's impacted me. And like, I feel like in every area of my life, like you said, I feel like it's taught me discipline from a young age. It taught me how to be focused, how to like pay attention in class and ex- like execute when you compete. Um, and I feel like that, that drains everything. I feel like I'm a pretty disciplined person. I can follow through with things. Um, and then starting so young, I feel like it makes it so much easier for when I fight. I feel like I, I don't even really remember like life before training. It's like, it's like breathing to me, like doing like training in jiu-jitsu. We talk with Erin Blanchfield. She is the main event fighter for UFC Atlantic City on March 30th at Boardwalk Hall. Go to Ticketmaster.com to get your tickets for UFC Fight Night Atlantic City. Now, Erin, you are from New Jersey. Now you're from North Jersey. So, yes. you know, I gotta ask you, as a North Jersey woman, for you coming to South Jersey, you said you fought Atlantic City, but how familiar are you with the area down here? Uh, I, I think I'm pretty familiar. Um, you know, I fought down there. Uh, my brother has fought down there. I went to go watch like um, other teammates compete down in Atlantic City. Uh, so I've been around. I haven't fought there myself in a while, but I bet I've been around the area. So where do you stand on the North versus South Jersey conversation? Um, you know, I'm definitely more of a North Jersey person. Obviously, I, um, I was born and raised here. And then my parents are from the city. So we'd always be going back and forth from the city. So I feel like I'm one of those like Jersey people that's like almost like one foot in each. Um, but, uh, but I mean, I love all of Jersey. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not trying to cause any problems for you. I'm just curious because yeah. every, everyone has a position. Like, for example, like I know people from South Jersey who they don't always want to go to the beach in South Jersey. They go, they kind of travel up north like Asbury Park or something. Whereas I know people from like Tom's River who will drive down the South Jersey to come down here. So you know, everyone seems to have their flavor. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I, I definitely love going down the shore in the summer. That's when I like. I usually go to, I go to like Long Branch. I love the LDI. I want to go back there again this summer. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely like a South Jersey beach person. Nice, nice. Very nice. Now, Aaron, when you talk about also, you know, being from Jersey, uh, you also went to Montclair state. So I got to ask you, so I've, I've read that you had a concentration in sports media. So does that mean you're coming for my job one day? Uh, I definitely want to get into like more sports media. Like I've done some commentating um, for like cage series, like grappling competitions and some other smaller shows. Um, so I've always wanted to kind of get more into like commentating to kind of stay involved in the sport, even like when I'm done fighting myself. Um, yeah. I just, I, I love the sports. So I want to stay involved with it. Now you said commentating though. You didn't, you didn't say radio. So what you're, what you're saying is, is that my job is safe at least. Yeah, your job's safe for now. We'll uh, never know. Oh, safe for now. Okay. I see how it is. I <laughs> got, got a little swagger there going on. It comes to my yeah. job. Goodness. I thought the swagger was just for the octagon. Goodness. Yeah, I'm taking all the energy to fight week. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Aaron, as you do prepare for this fight, you know, back to the actual fight itself, you know, for you, you know, a lot of people are saying that, you know, if you win this fight, you are going to get your well do shot at the title you know if you can get that title by the end of this year you know you are going to be still very young in the game it's not like you're someone who's been around you know fighting in the ufc for 10 15 years so for you if you get that belt at at an early age you know for you what what does that mean for the future uh you know i feel like for me i i I obviously i want to win it as soon as possible uh you know have an impressive win march 30th and, and see what happens with that um but you know i, I want to win that title and, and hold it as long as i can um until i decide to retire so whether that's my next fight or in two fights um i plan on winning it and, and keeping it so lot so i'm ready to basically step out of the game now aaron i've been covering mma for a long time and i can't remember many people who've had the nickname cold-blooded so what what is the story behind your nickname yeah, so um, my dad actually made it up uh, when I first started like competing in like grappling competitions or like kickboxing competitions. I guess I, I was pretty like stoic with my expressions. I wasn't like crazy happy when I won or like super upset if I lost. I was pretty like level headed and 
and my dad always was like, oh, that's cold blooded. Like he loved it when I would like win like grade and like was like, oh, just like ready for the next match. Um, so he made that up when I was like a kid. Um, and we'd always just like joke about it in the house. And then when I had like my first like kick, like actual kickboxing fight when I was like, I think 14 or 15, they asked if I had like a ring name and I was like, oh, it's cold blooded. And I was like, it, it just stuck since then. Everyone liked it. And I like the way I posed with my name. So kept it ever since. Now, you mentioned earlier in passing that your brother, Brendan, is also a fighter. So mm-hmm. when was the moment that your brother realized that you're a badass? <laughs> uh, probably a long time ago. We've, we've been training together since we were, like, kid kids. Um, and he's always been – I mean, when we were super young, we couldn't, he was, like, a little too small. But the older he got, we were able to kind of, like, train together. And, you know, he's come out to corner me about to be in my corner next weekend. Um, and, you know, I feel like he, having him is always like a great benefit. Um, just always someone to train out with and rely on. And he's always had a lot of faith in me and, and always helped me out. So it's great having him. Now, I don't think it falls on anyone's, you know, to overlook the fact that as a woman's fighter, you are headlining UFC Atlantic city during women's history month. So as a woman who is a fighter, what does that part of it mean for you? I think that's super fitting. I think it's awesome that they're having um, like more females headline cards. Um, I mean, it's not that even that long ago that they didn't even have females in the UFC. So now went from like not even having it, um, having people, having females like headline these cards. Um, I think it's awesome. It's for the growth in the sport. It's great for other young girls that are, that have aspirations um, in sports to see that. Um, So I think it's great for like the next generation to see women doing it now. She's New Jersey's Erin Blanchfield. She will be headlining UFC Atlantic City, of course, at Boardwalk Hall. You can watch it on ESPN or ESPN Plus, but you should get tickets and go out over to Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. She will be facing Manon Ferro for a match that people consider will be a title contending match. Erin, I appreciate you jumping on today. Best of luck with the fight. We look forward to seeing you get the win and your career just keep rising and rising. Yeah, thank you. Josh Hennick here on the Sports Bash here on 97.3 ESPN. Yeah, UFC Atlantic City. So Aaron Blanchfield versus Ferro is the main event. And then also on the card, you got Chris Weidman versus Bruno Silva, the former UFC middleweight champion. Also Vicente Luque, who is from New Jersey, will be fighting Joaquin Buckley in the fight on that night as well. So it's a really good card. And it's been too long since the UFC returned to Atlantic City. You know, I've always been telling people for years that, you know, when during the period between the UFC was last in Atlantic City and now them coming back, you know, we've had other MMA events, you know, Cage Fury Fighting Championship has been there numerous times. PFL MMA has been there, but there there is an intrinsic connection between the UFC and Atlantic City because of the fact that for those who don't know the history of it, Back 24 years ago, when MMA was first sanctioned in Atlantic City, the first fight card in Atlantic City was a UFC card, and it was Randy Couture, the Hall of Famer, on the card. And for many years, the UFC came to Atlantic City. It was a staple on their yearly tour with the pay-per-views, and there were many great fights in Atlantic City. And it's just been too long since we've had UFC fights in Atlantic city. And hopefully this is the start of many more fights to come. And it, like I said, it's great to have a New Jersey fighter like Aaron on the fight card again, March 30th, UFC Atlantic city. Get your tickets over at ticketmaster.com or over at boardwalkhall.com. And as I said, if you can't make it to the fight, you still can watch it on ESPN and ESPN plus that night. We'll check back on the text board coming up next, 609-403-0973. Your DMs into the 973 ESPN mobile app powered by First Bank of Seattle City. Josh Hennick hanging out with you, filling in for Mike Gill here on the Sports Bash. Don't forget our conversation with Aaron Blanchfield being brought to you by Bet365, whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. Listen to all the match. March Madness is coming to 97.3 ESPN. 
With GMF Finance and your qualified buyers, excludes Corvette, excludes prior sales. If you're waiting for the best deal on a newer pre-owned vehicle, stop waiting and listen to these incredible deals at Bennett Chevrolet during March Markdown, where you can save up to 20% on new Chevys. Yes, yes. up to 20% savings with GM supplier employee pricing. Plus, yes. you keep all the rebates. No games, no gimmicks. Just the best offer you'll find anywhere. Plus, Plus. there's available 1.9% financing. And Bennett is paying a whopping $10,000 cash for any clunker towards any pre-owned vehicle in stock that, that is, is a minimum 10 grand, grand regardless, regardless of condition, condition or miles. miles can you imagine how much more you'll get for a good quality trade while well, bennett chevy offers the best deals you can find on any newer pre-owned vehicle you can always count on a wonderful calm buying experience with our non-commissioned sales team who are paid on your satisfaction not how much you spend nobody beats a bennett deal nobody together let's drive at bennett chevrolet egg Harbor township and bennettchevy.com Progressive presents advice on new team drivers. You know, the hardest part about oh, teaching your team to drive is the chafing from the seatbelt. But the best part is the grip strength you build in your knuckles. Okay, now let's pull out of the driveway. Here's another tip. Offset a chunk of the cost of adding a team to your insurance with Progressive's team driver discount and get a break from the break. Progressive Casual Team Insurance Company and affiliates not available in all states or situations. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket, just like our customer, Paul. I run a farm with my family, and thanks to Cricket 5G, I know they can reach me, even when I'm out walking our dog, Valentine. Good dog, Valentine. Big nationwide 5G. Get fast 5G on four lines for only $25 per month each. Smile. You're on Cricket. Real customer pay for testimonial. Discounts vary per line. Cricket 5G requires a compatible device and it's not available everywhere. Fees, terms, and restrictions apply. See store for details. Do you love a good cigar almost as much as your family? Well, maybe that's an exaggeration, but you can find that perfect cigar at Smoker's Haven. With five New Jersey locations, Smoker's Haven has the finest selection of cigars in the area, like Ashton, My Father's, Romeo and Julieta, Monte Cristo, and more. All from the finest tobacco leaves and hand-rolled by the world's finest cigar makers. All locations are fully open. Stop in and let them help you find the perfect cigar to pair with your life. See all they have and their locations at SmokersHavenNJ.com. To thank you for 40 unforgettable years, Dell Technologies is celebrating with anniversary savings on their most popular tech. For a limited time only, save on select next-gen PCs like the XPS 13 Plus, powered by Intel Core processors and more. Plus, curate your dream setup with great deals on select monitors, mice, and more must-have electronics and accessories. When you shop online at dell.com slash deals, you'll have access to leading-edge technology and free shipping on everything. Again, that's dell.com slash deals. It's buyback March at Matt Platt Nissan. So bring any trade because AJ the Trade Man wants to buy your vehicle today. AJ pays $500 more than CarMax, so you get more dough for your ride. Brand new Sentra for just $199 per month lease with zero security deposits. And only Matt Platt Nissan has a four day love it or leave it return policy. Oh, yeah, it's on at Matt Platt Nissan. Or drive home with zero down and zero interest for 72 months. Plus, current Nissan owners get $1,000 owner loyalty cash back on every clearly marked new Nissan in stock. Have a job clearing 450 per week? We want to approve you today. And AJ wants your trade, but only at Matt Black Nissan. Com. With qualifications exist with approved credits. 1389 finance. Not all will qualify. Go to MetLifeNissan.com for complete details or calling 449 Price includes all costs to be paid by consumer except for licensing, registration, and taxes. Centro Fin, RY201059. We sell price 24579. Expires 4624. It's on at Nissan on the Black Horse Pike. Harbor Township. Spring is in the air, but so are airborne allergens like tree pollen, grass, mold, and ragweed. If spring allergies keep you trapped inside, then you need Navaj Nasal Care to keep you breathing clearly and enjoying all the beauties of spring. Navaj helps clear nasal passages that are often clogged because of seasonal allergies. Navaj gently flushes a pure, refreshing saline solution through your nasal passages to clear out congestion, sucking out that springtime pollen and other irritants trapped in your nose. Navaj springs into action quickly, helping you breathe more clearly in just 30 seconds. And you don't need a never-ending cycle of decongestants that can leave you feeling drowsy. Navaj is the fast and easy drug-free allergy solution that helps you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel healthier. Get Navaj today so you can get outdoors and enjoy your favorite springtime activities. Navaj is available online at navaj.com or in stores at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and Target. Navaj, N-A-V-A-G-E. 
Breathe easy. My mom was so tired all the time. And anytime I told her a problem, she always had one solution. She'd be like, you should take a nap. Both my wrists could be cut and I could be holding a knife and I could be like. Schultz and Peacock's Buzz, Pete Davidson, free hat tour. Saturday, July 20th, Ovation Hall and Ocean Casino Resort. Tickets on sale now at theoceanac.com. Pete Davidson, free hat tour, live. You're listening to the Sports Bash with Mike Gill. I never thought this radio stunt would catch on so big. On 97.3 ESPN. Josh A. Philly from Mike Gill here on a Wednesday edition of the Sports Bash. March Madness continues tonight. First four coming up at 6.30 at 97.3 ESPN. Also coming up in less than five minutes from now, your next opportunity to qualify for the Philly trip to Baltimore contest presented by Philly Sports Trips. If you're a friend and get to go on a fully trip, trip to Baltimore to the amazing catered company and must go on a trip to the sound of coming up in just a bit. So I've been delaying the inevitable long enough, and I know somewhere Jeff in the city is rubbing his hands together when I say this, but I do have into a the initial question I keep getting off is about who is in your final four. And I can't get away from a specific stat about the final four and the championship. So the analytic college basketball analytic you know, outlet Empire did an analysis and 20 of the last 21 20 of the last 21 national champions were all top 25 in offensive and defensive history. The only one that wasn't was Kemba Walker's UConn team. So, what I did was is I looked at who those eight teams are. And that's how I came up with my decision on the final four. Because all of the four final four teams, eight of them Four of the eight are there. So I, I double checked my list. I checked it twice to make sure I was getting the right names out there. So, based on running through the tournament, my final four is obviously UConn and Houston. And I think obviously because they're two of the best teams in college basketball. And even though both of them are very different and unique roads through the final four, I do genuinely believe. Both of them will take that, okay? I think both of them are two of the best teams in college basketball. I think that their road to the championship is pretty straightforward as long as they play the double they play. The other two teams that are in terms of the analytics, I got Creighton and I got Arizona in my final four. And here's why. I think Creighton is arguably one of the best teams in college basketball. And they've just been running into a buzzball that is being in the same conference as Utah. So when I look at Creighton's bracket, you realize very quickly that there's not a lot of threat in the Midwest. Frankly, the biggest threat in the Midwest they may never see. I think Purdue is not making it to the elite league. I think Purdue is going to lose in the second or third round. And if they don't lose to TCU, they're probably going to lose to Gonzaga. And then on the other side of the bracket, I got Arizona. This is not your traditional Arizona team that always falls short. Arizona is coming from a bracket that's got North Carolina as the one and St. Mary's as a five. And I think as long as they can beat either North Carolina or St. Mary's, they are in the final four. So, Again, St. Mary's is not in the Ken Palm 8. Nope, they're not. And neither is North Carolina. So we're going to go off of history and we go off of the numbers. My final four are all in the Ken Palm 8 teams that fit the criteria of at least in top 25 in offensive and defensive efficiency. UConn, Arizona, Houston, and Creighton. And you're probably going to get pretty good odds for Creighton and Arizona in terms of 
value in terms of future plays if you want to go that way. So, again, those are my final four picks. I'll give you some actual game picks for Thursday and Friday a little bit later in the show here on 97.3 ESPN. Josh Hennig filling in for Mike Gill on a hump day Wednesday edition still to come. Football at four with Jeff Mosher. Five from Danny Ryan. A Weinberg Wednesday with Dave Weinberg at the five o'clock hour. All that and more is still to come here on 97.3 ESPN, as well as your text messages at 609-403-0973. But before we get to anything else, I need caller number seven at 609-573-3776. 609-573-3776. Caller number seven. You are in for the Phillies trip to Baltimore contest where you and a friend will get to go on Father's Day weekend to Baltimore with Philly sports trips. But you must be first. Call number seven at 609-573-3776. And then you must be present next Thursday for the Phillies watch party at Maynard's in Margate where Mike Gill and the Sports Bash will be broadcasting live during the Phillies game. So call number seven. Good luck. 609-573-3776. And we will see you next Thursday at Maynard's in Margate for Philly's opening day watch party here with all of us here at 97.3 ESPN. Football Four with Jeff Mosher next. It's Phil's opening day at Maynard's Cafe in Margate on Thursday, March 28th. Win a Phillies road trip to Baltimore, Green Day, or sold-out Creed tickets. Visit for lunch or dinner and try Maynard's famous sandwiches and stay for the fun-filled nightlife. Come to Maynard's on Thursday, March 28th for the Phil's opening day starting at 2 p.m. There's always something exciting at Maynard's, including Easter Saturday with a special appearance by the Easter Bunny. Visit Maynard's today, your one-stop destination for fun in Margate. Hey, it's John Marks. Growing up here, I know that the fans get the last word. The fans have spoken, and real Philly sports fans love the Bet Parks Casino and Sportsbook app. It's the only online casino and sportsbook app that I recommend. 24-7 live casino action. Join me now and download the Bet Parks app, and all your favorite casino games are right at your fingertips. Bet on all your favorite sports. Philly hoops, Philly hockey, college basketball, and more. Odds, bets, slots, and games right in your pocket. Play the hottest online slots or play blackjack, roulette, baccarat, or Texas Hold'em with a live deal right on your phone get winning on the bet parks app it's so simple new users join me right now just download the app and get up to one thousand dollars casino bonus back if you're not a winner in your first 24 hours details on the bet parks app or at betparks.com new users only casino bonus must be wagered terms and conditions apply you must be 21 and in pennsylvania or new jersey gambling problem call 1-800 i feel good dad are you singing to your cereal? Yes, I am. Like I knew that I would. No, no, no. no, a dance too? Come on, Ava. Silk almond milk. Starts the morning on a high note. Yeah. Oh. Songs, dances, and dad jokes. Oh, so good. So good. I got you. Mm. Silk almond milk. With calcium, vitamins A, D, and E. Feel plenty good. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. Just like our customer, Jaren. I'm the singer and guitarist in a band, and I use my Cricket phone for everything. It's basically like another band member. Don't miss a single beat. Switch today and get a free Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. Smile. You're on Cricket. Real customer paid for testimonial. Must bring your number to Cricket on up to a $60 a month voice plan, depending on device. Select models only while supplies last. First month service charge and tax to its sale. Cricket 5G requires a compatible device and is not available in room. Fees, terms, and restrictions apply. See store for details. Two for 222. Two for 222. Drive home two new Kias at Matt Black Kia for just 222 per month. For the first time, get two new Kias for 222 at Matt Black Kia, where you can get a brand new 2024 Kia Forte LXS for just 111 per month lease with a zero six. Security deposits and just $39.95 to its signing. With a price like that, why not get two for $222? That's a brand new 2024 Kia Forte. 24 month lease for $111 per month or drive home two for $222. Both with Matt Black Kia's exclusive four day love and leave and return policy. It's gotta be a Matt Black Kia. With approved credit, not all will qualify. Credit may affect down payment. Offers can't be combined. Go to MattBlackKiaNJ.com for complete details or 888-505-6670. Price includes all costs to be paid by consumer except for licensing, registration, and taxes. Through KMF, 24 months, 2011 per month, 10,000 miles per year. Rebates and incentives to dealer expires 4224. Matt Black Kia, 6211 Black Horse Pike.
Harbor Township, on Route 37 in Tom's River. Sneezing, coughing, a stuffy nose, runny nose, post-nasal drip, interrupted sleeping. I just I was groggy at the end of the day. Allergies and sinus congestion were making Jana miserable. Then, a friend recommended Navage. Navage provides immediate drug-free congestion relief, flushing your nasal passages with refreshing saline and sucking out mucus germs and other airborne irritants. Navage helps you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel your best right away. Navage gave me instant relief. I didn't have to wait 30 minutes. I didn't have to wait an hour, 90 minutes. I didn't have to wait. I didn't have to wait a minute. I just, I ran the rinse and I felt immediately, I felt better. Stop suffering from congestion and start breathing and feeling your best again with Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. I've had people ask me how I find relief and I tell them Navage immediately. This thing is amazing. Navage is available at Navage.com or at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe that every sport should be epic. Every basket, every game, every point, every play. From the moments that are legendary to the ones that fly under the radar. Whether it's a three-pointer at the buzzer to tie the game or a player goes two for two at the foul line. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. 21 plus only must be present in New Jersey. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Terms and conditions apply. Home of the Philadelphia Eagles. Hey, got him again! It's good. Ball game. And flyers. Tuesday, front of the desk. 973 ESPN. WENJ. WENJ HD. Millville, Atlantic City. A Town Square media station serving all of South Jersey. 97.3 ESPN presents the Sports Bash with Mike Gill. It's time for Football at Four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Just hungry to bring back another Lombardi to Philly. Uh, it's, uh, the fans deserve it. Our team deserves it. Uh, culture begs for it. Now live, this is Football at Four. Football at Four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Of course, hosted by... Jeff Mosher and Adam Kaplan. It's a Wednesday. That means Jeff Mosher is joining us. Talk about the state of the Eagles at this point in the offseason. Listen, we got a long ways to go before this roster is solidified. And Jeff Mosher knows that as well as anyone because him and Adam say, I feel like every single Inside the Birds podcast that this team is far from being built. But Jeff, we do have to talk about the where the Eagles are right now, at least. How you doing, my friend? I'm good. How's the pinch hitting going? Uh, so far, so good. You know, no, nobody has called for my head or there's nobody picketing outside the building. So I, I, I think I'm doing all right. Ah, well, allow me to be the first then, John. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, um, I, you are, you, you're, you make a great point as we get into the Eagles, Josh. Um, it's hard for people to remember it because we're it's sort of a microwave society and immediate gratification but some of the best movies moves howie roseman has made have come late may june and even at the end of training camp um whether it's a ronald darby type trade or another type of maneuver to bring in a player you know they got zach cunningham last year like two weeks into training camp not that he was great but he was about as Good as you, he was a good Eagles linebacker last year. So, yeah, there's a lot of time left. I do want to touch on two of the guys that they an, officially announced yesterday, that being uh, the linebacker Oren Burks and the D-tackle P.J. Mustafer, because these are not big-name guys, Jeff, but these are guys that kind of fit the mold with the Eagles done in the past, right, which is getting players who can add depth to the roster in case something happens. And, it really feels like the Eagles are kind of making that transition from big splashy moves to now fortifying positions on the roster. Yeah. I mean, uh, a lot of moves that the Eagles have made more recently, I guess, like we were talking about Oren Burks is a year, you know, he's depth. Zach Bond is depth. Matt Hennessy ideally is depth. Um, and, and I would think that, there are there's still room to add a player who's going to be a significant player, whether it's trade market or maybe a safety, because it's right now it's a buyer's market at safety, Josh. There's still a lot of decent safeties that are out there. A guy like Julian Blackman, who has started for the Colts for a couple of years, is still out there. Justin Simmons, everybody asks about him. He's still out there, right? So I'm not saying you can't land a starter or an impact player at this point 
in free agency. Um, but for the most part, the guys that they've brought in, like Devontae Parker also, are, 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 are to add depth and to compete to make the team. And they're, they've made it clear, Josh, that whether we like it or not, right, that they're going to play younger players that they've drafted, guys like Jalen Carter, guys like Jordan Davis, guys like Nolan Smith. Um, they are going to give these guys an opportunity. You know, Sidney Brown will come back from an ACL injury um, at some point, and you'll see what we'll see what he's got. But they, they there are sort of, sort of turning the page as they move away from the Jason Kelseys and the Fletcher Coxes, who have always been there and always given you 100% of the reps, almost all – well, for Jason and, and Fletcher, a significant rotational piece. Milton Williams will undoubtedly see an uptick in playing time because of uh, no Fletcher Cox now, and he'll get more of an opportunity. So they've made it clear that they're they're turning over a lot of their their snaps to younger players. You mentioned about safety. You know, it, it's something that a lot of people have. They're conflicted about Jeff because of the fact that you know people there is a group of people who like CJ Gar Johnson being back. So you know we got that figured out, but still, no one really likes the idea of Reed Blankenship being the other safety. And Sidney Brown, who knows when he'll be back. And even when he does come back, he probably won't be 100% back to himself. So, mm -hmm. you know, do, do you expect the Eagles to then bring in multiple guys to maybe try to put in there? Or do you think they want to zero in on one specific guy to have next to CJ? That's a good question, Josh. You know, I mean, I, I don't think they're just going to bank on... Sidney Brown coming back and being 100% ready to go, right? So I feel like they know they need depth in that area. There is still the draft. It's not a great safety draft, but there's some guys who can play. Um, if you're if you're going to play C.J. Gardner-Johnson as a nickelback, right, and you're still in a nickel or a dime situation, then you need two safeties, right? Because <laughs> because technically mm -hmm. he's your nickel, and you still unless you're you're going with a different kind of look, a more cornerback heavy dime, but um, so, so that's why I, I would imagine they're still involved in the safety market and maybe not just one, but, but another, you know, it's interesting because, you know, we heard so much from you guys on the inside of the birds podcast and other people who covered the Eagles, Jeff, that the Eagles really like Reed Blankenship and they're really like what he's done in training camp. And, you know, now going into this off season, it feels like, you know, he's almost like a forgotten man in some ways where it was like, you know, I felt like every time I listened to you and Adam on the inside mm -hmm. of the birch pod, it was, you guys were saying, look, we're trying to explain to you guys, the Eagles really like this guy. And it's like, now it's almost like, Oh yeah, that guy over there. I mean, I think we've tried to do two things on inside the birds uh, and that's sort of make people understand uh, as you were mentioning a couple of years ago. And then even into last year, the Eagles really like Reed Blankenship because they are clearly have gotten more out of him that you would normally expect from an undrafted free agent. I mean, he started the playoff game for him two years ago, right? So he became the first undrafted rookie in team history to do that. So already he's a success story. If he never plays another snap, that, I mean, he's already beaten the odds. But at the same time, what we've tried to say more recently is that you saw what happened last year when he was thrust into too prominent of a role for a guy who's probably – best used as a number three safety. And so that's why it's important that the Eagles upgrade that position because let's get Reed Blankenship first established as a really good situational number three safety and let him develop to see if he can then become a starter. You know, it reminds me of when this the old heads will remember this, but Quentin Michael uh, was an undrafted free agent that the Eagles had for a couple of years yep. and he had to work his way up on special teams. He didn't really get the starting job handed to him either. And in fact, in his, I want to say his fourth year, uh, when he was started to really prove himself a little bit, they started a draft pick named Sean Considine out of Iowa. Uh, and it took like five oh or goodness, six weeks. Yeah. Jim Johnson, Jim Johnson really wanted this draft pick to play and uh, you know, Iowa defensive backs and all that. And finally, it was just becoming clear that Sean Considine wasn't better than Quentin Michael. And then they got Quentin Michael as a number two safety next to Doc. Um, and then Quentin Michael grew. And I think you need, I think it all happened a little bit too fast for Reed last year, going to a starting safety 
uh, right off the bat uh, in year two after just, you know, after making the team as a rookie and only playing special teams. And then by the end of the year, seeing some time on defense. Talk with Jeff Mosher, of course, co-host of the Inside the Birds podcast, writing over at InsideTheBirds.com at Jeff P. Mosher on the Twitter X platform, joining us here at Football at Four on 97.3 ESPN. Jeff, one of the things is you mentioned C.J. Gunnar Johnson as a safety slash nickel. Adam on yesterday was talking about how there's a, still a deep nickel market out there for nickel cornerbacks. Do you think that the Eagles are going to then go out and get one of those guys to kind of maybe not ask CJ to play cor uh, nickel corner as much. Probably. I mean, they did groom a bunch of guys uh, last year, whether it was Eli Ricks for that role. Um, they do have Makai Garner, who they auditioned in that role a little bit. Uh, I personally think, you know, that on a one year prove it deal with very little guaranteed money, it would make a lot of sense to bring Avante Maddox back. And I know everybody's going to say, oh, he's hurt. He's hurt. Adam and I detailed the entire list of nickel corners in free agency, right? The best one was Kenny Moore. He resigned with the Colts for a pretty good number, All right? Everybody else, you could literally say, this guy's always hurt. That guy's always hurt. It's the nature of the position. You're a nickel corner. You have, you're, you're basically like a starter, but you're inside. So you're battling a physical receiver. You have run fits. Teams like to run out of 11 personnel. So you're on the field against a lot of runs and you have to be there in the tackle in the, in the mix. So it's a position that lends itself to getting hurt a lot. Not maybe not as much as Avante has been hurt, but the point is if you're going to sign a guy off free agency right now, who already has somewhat of an injury history, might as well bring back a guy who, you know, plays at a pretty good level when he is healthy and knows your defense, knows your structure, knows your locker room. But there's also, should, sorry, Jeff, yeah, there's also ahead. a lot of corners in the draft uh, a kid like you that you know well, Max Melton, right, for a South Jersey yep. kid who who projects to be a good inside outside type of corner. I feel like this draft is full of guys with that potential. Now, mind you, signing Avante Maddox would or anybody on a one year deal never precludes you from drafting at that position. So you could do both, but it does strike right. me that there are a lot of corners in this draft who have that nickel versatility. Yeah, I, I just think for me, at least, you know, as much as I love the draft, as much as I love college football, Jeff, I feel like because we're still a month plus away from the draft that like, you mm -hmm. know, the mind is still on who's available in free agency. And I, I know it's kind of like, I mean, we all know what's going to happen in the next six weeks. There's going to be two million mock drafts and most of them are going to be wrong. So it's like, yes. you know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and get too high or too low on any, on any projections right now on uh, March 20th. I agree. I agree. It's tough. I, I was going to ask you, cause you mentioned about development, the Eagles history of development. You know, we've already seen now multiple guys leave from the Stoutland university this off season, yeah. Suo Peta, Jack Driscoll, Jason Kelsey retires. So we're, we're seeing a turnover in terms of not just the starters on the O-line, but the depth behind the starters. So, you know, where does Matt Hennessy fit into that whole paradigm, Jeff? Because, you know, in the past, what have the Eagles done? They've had a Jack Driscoll. He could play guard and tackle. Sue Petty could play all the guard positions. Dickerson and Jurgens both have a background of playing center so they can move in in an emergency, right? So it's all a bit about versatility. It feels like Hennessy kind of fits that versatility mold for the birds. Yeah, he definitely does. Kid out of Temple. Um, he can play center or guard. I thought it was an important signing because he has snapped the football. And if you, you know, that's an important attribute, especially now that you don't have Jason Kelsey. Cam Jurgens is your center. Nobody else on the roster has ever, to my knowledge, uh, has been a snapper the way Matt Hennessy was when he was a center at Temple. I think with Atlanta, he was a guard. I'm not sure if he had gotten any he, reps. He at played center. some snaps at center. Yeah. Um, okay. So th there, he's done it in college. He's done it in the NFL. Um, that That's important. You ne absolutely need that in the NFL because, and we've already seen Cam Jurgens was hurt twice last year. So, um, you know, you get into a situation where if you don't have a backup center, you know, you're, you're in trouble, especially if your center gets hurt. So I thought that Matt Hennessy was a really smart depth signing for them. Will he compete at right guard? Hmm. You know, ideally, 
you got Tyler Steen, and ideally maybe they draft a kid uh, who may be a tackle who can start a guard. We'll see. And 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 Hennessy is sort of in the mix, but not really in the mix. Um, but you know, we'll see how that plays out. But I, the, to me, the most important thing was that they armed themselves with a backup center. What do you think is going to be the higher priority moving forward? Is it going to be maybe drafting more O linemen or trying to find some more experienced guys that you're talking about to have for depth? It wouldn't shock me if they brought in another veteran for depth. But, I mean, if you look at their top four depth pieces right now, Fred Johnson, left tackle, right? He's he's played in the NFL, played for the Bengals, so he's got experience. Matt Hennessy played for the Falcons. He has experience. Um, Tyler Steen is a, a high draft pick. They, you know, day t- uh, two guy last year. He got he, he doesn't have a lot of experience, but he did play and will compete for a job. Um, and then they signed the kid Darian Kennard, who was a fifth round pick from the Chiefs uh, last year. I think he was on the Chiefs practice squad last year, not the fifty three. Either way, he was a fifth round pick. Was a, drafted as a tackle, but the Chiefs, as we were told, um, played him at guard and thought he was a little better there. Not the the greatest athlete to put a tackle. So that's a guy who will come in and compete as well. Could they bring in, you know, they have LaRaven Clark still, uh, Josh. So that's another guy. I think with the practice squad rules that allow you to keep stash veterans uh, on the practice squad, they'll probably look to just keep getting younger at that position and put some good youth on the uh, um, on the roster there. Ah, to be honest, I completely forgot LaRaven Clark was still around. I, I got Yeah, he's still around. <laughs> I mean, it's like that guy is so out of sight, out of mind at this point. It's crazy. <laughs> well, well, Brett Toth is still around, Josh. That's another guy's name. I mean, he's How? been with the Eagles for so many different years, right? I thought I went to the Cardinals practice squad or something. Yeah, and he came back. He's he's been back. So came, I mean, they're not guys. <laughs> Prodigal son came back to the Eagles. Good grief. Of <laughs> uh, speak, speaking of guys, uh coming and going. I, I did want to touch on him with you as well. Jeff Mosher from the Inside the Birds podcast, InsideTheBirds.com. You know, Josh Sweat is still here for at least one more year. And I, I wanted to know from you because I thought it was interesting for those who listen to the in, uh, the uh, the New Heights podcast where, you know, you know, Jason Kelsey, you know, made the comment. Now, as we know, Kelsey is retired, but he still considers himself an eagle for life. So he's you know, Travis was making fun of him saying, you're still talking about the Eagles. He's like, yeah, they're my team. But, um, you know, one of the comments they made, he says, you know, I'm glad to see sweat is coming back. He said, cause he said, I don't understand why anyone would let Hassan Reddick leave the building. And mm. I, I kind of was like, Hmm, that's interesting because Kelsey was Jeff just in the building, right? Like he was just there playing and, you know, going through all the motions. So, you know, d- do, do we read anything into Kelsey coming out and saying, look, I'm glad Josh Sweat is here, but I don't understand this Reddick stuff. Like, do we read anything into that or we take that as just an independent observer? Yeah, not really. I mean, Jason's just a football player, a great one. And he views things more through a football prism than say a business prism. Right. And uh, I think his his, overall point is when you have a pass rusher that good and you're trying to win, why would you let him? walk out the door and I, you know the Eagles don't want him to walk out the door but obviously there's a situation here where he wants to get paid a lot more and have a different contract and the Eagles are leery of that so that's where the business side of it comes in and that, that you know I'm sure Jason will I'm sure Jason knows that also I think a player is gonna have a player's back Jason's always had his coaches is back his teammates back so I get where he's coming from, but you know, it's the business side that's getting away in the way here. It's not about any desire that the Eagles have to get Hassan Reddick off the roster immediately. You know, is Reddick going to get traded or not? Like if you, if you, if you had to place like, like all, all the money on one outcome, right? Like if you had to be like, look, Jeff, you got to pick one or the other or you lose your house. You know, mm. wh- what do you, you know, is Reddick getting traded or will he be here next year? I would think that the, um, the fact that they delayed his uh, bonus by an extra month is a pretty right. good indication that they're going to trade him. Yeah. Right. And if they trade why, him, why, the, yeah, go ahead. 
No, I was just gonna say, like, why would you why would both sides agree to that unless they felt like that was gonna happen? Gotcha. So if that being said, if we're looking at next year's pass rushers, right? It's Bryce Huff, not mm-hmm. Josh Huff, Bryce Huff, um, <laughs> Brandon Graham, and Josh Sweat. So then you need more. So where's the more coming from when it comes to pass rushers? Well, I would never put it past the Eagles to draft pass rusher. Um, Like you said, your top, well, you look, you try to look at things, not just as an edge rusher, but as a four man rush, right? So without Mm -hmm. Hassan Reddick, your four man rush, if you were to rank accordingly would be Bryce Huff, Josh Sweat, Jalen Carter, and, who Milton Williams has the inside or do they sure. put Nolan Smith on the field and then try to kick um, Josh sweat inside? Very possible. Josh sweat has done that before. Um, but that's basically your four best pass rushers, which by the way, is still pretty good. I mean, I, I don't know what to make of Josh sweat. You know, I, I'd like to think he'll come back a little bit better than uh, he was at the end of the last year. But at this time, at this point, you, you just don't know. I mean, the Eagles were willing to cut him. So what does that tell you? So, uh, but that's still a pretty formidable four rushers, right? Sweat, Huff, Jalen Carter, and um, Nolan Smith. And Milton Williams is another guy who's added good pass rush at a time. So now I wouldn't put it past the Eagles to draft the pass rusher sometime in the first three picks too to throw in the mix. And I wouldn't put it past the Eagles to sign like a find a one year veteran pass rusher, a Chris Long type. You know, I'm not saying you're going to get a Chris Long type a year out of him. I'm just saying just to add to the mix there because that's what they do. But you're right to to wonder, is that as formidable as what they've had over the last two years? Yeah. I can't sit here and rubber. I'm not going to rubber stamp it and say it is. I think it's it's questionable. Well, I mean, Hassan Reddick had double digit sacks four straight years with four different defensive coordinators. So I mean, yeah. you're giving a you're you're letting a guy leave who has a track record that any guy who's in coaching him, he's still getting you 10 sacks. You know what I mean? So it's like it, it's hard, it's hard for me to be like, oh yeah, Nolan Smith, oh yeah whoever Mm -hmm. yeah i mean like those guys don't come around (laughs) all all that often where you get four straight years of double digit sacks so um yeah it'll be kind of interesting to see how that works out jeff before i let you go um i know half the audience is going to give me the side eye when i ask you this question but i did Mm -hmm. see on your twitter x platform uh jeff p mosher you you were joking about the latest documentary it's, uh, now it's gonna be receiver went from quarterback <laughs> to receiver on Netflix and mm. I I can't happen to not forget about the conversation that you and Adam have had about how the Eagles have done a great job at avoiding these documentaries over the years they've never been on hard knocks they haven't had anybody on the Netflix shows yet you know Jason Kelsey's Amazon's the only one like over the last <laughs> decade plus so, like the Eagles have done a great job at avoiding the cameras in the building. So my question to you is how many more years do you think the Eagles are going to be able to avoid? Because it feels like sports documentary is like the new, uh, new show on streaming platforms. Everybody wants to have. How many years are they going to be able to avoid? This is what you're asking me. Yeah, man. That's a good question. You know what? Like the quarterback thing, as from what I understand, they asked Jalen Hurts and he declined, right? He did not want Correct. to be. Uh, so I think that, um, you know, I, and I have no idea if Devontae Smith or AJ, AJ Brown was asked to be in this recent one for receiver. Um, I could see it happening if the individual decides they want to do it. But um, organizationally, yeah, it's not something that they look to be involved with. It's just amazing to me. I feel like every team in the NFL – has been touched by NFL films, cameras and stuff. And it's like the Eagles facility is like sacred ground or something. It's like the one, (laughs) it's the one team that nobody has been able to like cross the threshing floor to use a, an old, you know, biblical term. Yeah. They're elusive. All right, Josh. I mean, if they they were that elusive uh, in every, you know, position on the field, they'd be uh, another Super Bowl team again. (laughs) Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe maybe that's the key. When the when Howie Roseman is no longer in charge, maybe that's when the cameras will get in, right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and by then, we'll all we'll be. No, I don't think so. I, I honestly think it's it's a Jeffrey Lurie thing. So when I think Julian okay. Lurie takes over, it's, oh. it's just going to be more of the same. Gotcha. Interesting. Personally. All right. 
Well, you know, maybe maybe Julie will make a side deal or something, and that's how they'll get in. You know, you never know. I might be never six know. feet under by then. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, the way the way the way the way uh, things are going, who knows? <laughs> Jeff Mosher joining us. Football and four powered by the Inside the Birds podcast, InsideTheBirds.com. and he joined us here on a Wednesday edition of the Sports Bath. Jeff, always appreciate the conversation. Uh, enjoy. The tournament, I know Philly's opening day is a week away. I know you're pining for that as well. So, uh, but hopefully the Eagles can at least give you a, a breath so you can have to, you know, talk about some other crazy move coming up in the next few days. All I need is a couple of UConn Huskies victories and I'll be good. You know that six victories and uh, or eight victories and I'll be great. And they're, they're in my final four, Jeff. I don't know if you heard, but uh, Ken That's Palm it? did it's an in four. Well, so Ken Palm did a breakdown so from them. So 20 uh-huh. of the last 21 NCAA tournament winners all were mm-hmm. top 25 in offensive and defensive efficiency. So they came Correct. up with a list of, of, of eight, sorry, eight yep. teams in this year's tournament. So mm-hmm. I drew my final four from that list. Okay. So it, it, off of that, UConn, Houston, Creighton, Arizona, that's my final four. So they have to be in the final four. I like it. I like it. And by the I way, the one, the one, what's that? I believe I have a surprise. I have Kentucky uh, in my final four. Not really confident about it, but I just don't they, love Houston in that, that bracket. Kentucky is not one of the Ken Palm eight. I will let you know. Oh, yeah. They play no defense. So I know that they're not, but they have a heck of a, of a offensive uh, firepower. And we know that offense is usually uh, really big uh, in, in the, uh, the NCAA tournament. By the way, the one year, the 20 out of 21, that a national uh-huh. champion was not top 25 in offensive and defensive efficiency was the Kemba Walker UConn team. I would have picked that. Yeah, that was an interesting year. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I feel like it's safe to say history is on UConn's side right now. So Sure hope so, man. Got my fingers crossed. <laughs> Jeff, talk to you soon. See you, bud. And, of course, our conversation with Jeff Mosher, Football at 4, here on 97.3 ESPN, being brought to you by Bet365. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. A man who is not ordinary is Danny Ryan. He joins me next for five from Danny Ryan here on the Sports Bass. Josh Hedding filling in for Mike Gill on 97.3 ESPN. Listen to all the bet. March Madness is coming to 97.3 ESPN. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket, just like our customer, Jaren. I'm the singer and guitarist in a band, and I use my Cricket phone for everything. It's basically like another band member. Don't miss a single beat. Switch today and get a free Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. Smile, you're on Cricket. Real customer paid for testimonial must bring your number to Cricket on up to a $60 a month voice plan depending on device. Select models only while supplies last. First month service charge and tax to its sale. Cricket 5G requires a compatible device and is not available everywhere. These terms and restrictions apply. See store for details. When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moments. It's the anticipation of another face car, the thrill of an extra spin, and the pure joy of a jackpot. It's all your favorite games at your fingertips. Plus, get up to $1,000 casino bonus back if you're down in the first 24 hours. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet parks. Must be 21 in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Ohio, or Maryland. Gambling problem, 1-800-GAMBLER. One night, one stage. Woo! Country music. Hot is super group. The front man. Featuring Richie McDonald, formerly a Lone Star. Maybe I'm Larry Stewart, lead singer of Restless Heart. Tim Rushlow, formerly of Little Texas. Friday, March 29th, the Excite Center at Parks Casino. The voices that brought you three decades of number one country hits live. On sale now at parkscasino.com. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In business, service is everything. Cintas delivers what you need to better serve your customers. Whether it's freshly laundered work apparel for almost any job imaginable, tested and inspected fire protection systems, first aid and safety supplies, on-site AED training, or mops and restroom products stocked and ready when you need them. Better work days happen together. So visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the work day. You're going to feel a puff of air. Strong's optometry oh. has set their sights on staffing up. Try the next line. Hey, Kim, can you tell our 2 o'clock we're running 15 behind? Sorry, we're a bit backed up today. 
He needs an optometric technician to keep an eye on it all. Where are the dilation drops? Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Want more speed? Then you're in luck because Xfinity just increased their internet speeds and they're faster than ever. Plus, with super fast internet and a reliable connection, you can do more of what you love whenever you want. More gaming, more downloading, more video chatting, and more cozy nights on the couch streaming your favorite movies and TV shows. If life with double the speed is sounding pretty awesome, that's because it is. It's time to get more out of your internet with faster speeds from Xfinity. Get 150 megabit Xfinity internet for only $25 a month for 12 months with no annual contract. That's double the speed for half the price. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Restrictions apply. Equipment taxes and other charges extra. After promo, regular rates apply. Actual speeds vary and not guaranteed. Now, during Staples Print Big Sale, get $20 off your print purchase of $100 or more, $50 off your print purchase of $200 or more, and $100 off your print purchase of $300 or more. So, the more you print at Staples, the more you save. To demonstrate, print, print, print at Staples, you save, save, save. But if you print, 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 print at Staples, you save, 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 save. See how that works. Staples Print Big Sale. Print more, save more, up to $100. Ends 4-6. Visit staples.com slash print for details. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe that every sport should be epic. Every basket, every game, every point, every play. From the moments that are legendary to the ones that fly under the radar. Whether it's a game-winning goal in the final seconds of overtime or a shot on goal in the first period. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. 21 plus only must be present in New Jersey. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Terms and conditions apply. Ever wonder what's around the next corner? Past the trees. Into the canyons. Over the mountains. Or through the desert. That's where adventure lives. Take a Nissan SUV and go find it. Powered by NJM. No jingles or mascots, just great insurance. This is the Town Square, New Jersey Info and Weather Network. 76ers face the Suns, the Phillies play the Orioles, and the Flyers have the night off. This is Danny Ryan with your South Jersey Sports Center. The 76ers head west for a tough four-game road trip starting tonight against Kevin Durant and the Phoenix Suns. Listen to the game live from Arizona right here on 97.3 ESPN. Coverage starts at 10 p.m. After a big win last night at home, the Flyers will head to North Carolina tomorrow night for a battle with the Hurricanes. You can listen to the game live right here on 97.3 ESPN. Coverage starts at 7. And the Phillies send Taiwan Walker to the mound tonight against the Baltimore Orioles. First pitch is at 6.05. For more Eagles, Sixers, Phillies, and Flyers, download our free mobile app. Your forecast is next. Find what you love, love what you find. A total wine and more. There's so much waiting for you. Spirits and beer, thousands of wine. Drink responsibly, B21. From the Towns Point of Jersey Info and Weather Network, I'm Chief Meteorologist Dan Zarrow. Temperatures take another little tumble for tomorrow and Friday, another taste of February chill, and then a coastal storm is brewing for the first half of the weekend. Clearing skies tonight, it'll be cold and breezy. Low temperature, 29. Wind chill may dip into the teens. Mostly sunny tomorrow. It's back to blustery. High of only 44. Sunday clouds Friday, high 48. Saturday looking rainy and windy. Get weather 24-7 wherever you are. Download our free mobile app today. Win a 2024 BMW sedan during the Race to the Finish promotion at Borgata Hotel, Casino, and Spa. Now through April 27th, earn entries on slots and table games for your chance to win. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. You're listening to The Sports Bash with Mike Gill. When I'm driving, I got a guy on the radio who talks to me. I can't see 
everybody talks to me. On 97.3 ESPN. 434 here on the Sports Pass. Josh Drake playing for Mike Yell on 97.3 ESPN. It's time for five from Danny Ryan, where Danny Ryan, extraordinary producer, comes in and just throws fastballs in my direction or curveballs or screwballs or, well, I don't actually read his rundown, so I have no idea what he's bringing to the table here. I, I just trust him. He's not going to completely implode the show. Because if Mike Gill trusts Danny Ryan, I guess I should too. Right, Danny? I'm setting you up for failure today, Josh. You, you're on to oh, me. Oh, nab it. <laughs> I got some questions that are going to set you up. Now, how you doing, Josh? It's a <laughs> pleasure as always. Second day of five with Danny Ryan this week, so I'm excited. So what do you got on tap for us here? All right, let's start off with number one. So I was going through Twitter and kind of a slow news day, in my opinion. So I was trying to go for some. Oh, outside. no, no, it, it's, it's not kind of it. It is a slow news day. Yeah, NFL free agency it's, is definitely it's the slowest down a news bit. day. And like. Yeah, it's, it's probably the slowest news day since. I don't know, March 2nd. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's a doozy today. I mean, you're only eight days away from. Opening day in Major League Baseball, NFL free agency has died down. Yep. The NBA is meh. I mean, the Sixers have a tough stretch, but the NBA season as a whole is kind of slow right now. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the NHL. And I'm not really going to take this in a direction that many of the listeners may think, because I want to talk about the Philadelphia Flyers and not a player, not even, you know, the guys that scored the goals in last night's game, Owen Tippett, Morgan Frost. No. I want to talk about the head coach, John Tortorella, and specifically a media member that works for Crossing Broad. Anthony Sanfilippo of Crossing Broad and Flyers head coach John Tortorella continued their two-month one-sided feud last night as Tortorella once again de declined to answer any of Sanfilippo's questions as he has been doing over the past two months. Uh, here's what the exchange sounded like last night after the Flyers' 4-3 to three win over Toronto. Fire John, can you take us through your decision to I'll answer your question? That's right. Somebody else will ask it. So a quick clip, but I love that right there where he goes, that's right. Somebody else will ask it because somebody else did indeed ask his question, which was about Sean Couturier being a healthy scratch. But this is this saga has just been going on for months now. And I quite, I, I can't quite wrap my head around it. So I wanted to ask you, Josh, do you think Tortorella has taken this grudge a bit too far? And what would you do? How would you go about this if you were in Anthony Sanfilippo's position? So, the, the, to me, there's two sides to this thing. One, there is an argument to be made that what Anthony originally said that got him in hot water, he should have never said. Okay? Right. there, there's it, To me, it's not all on Tortorella. I think part of the problem is, is that, Danny, we live in a society today that people would rather be the first to say something than get it right. And the part of the problem is, is that, you know, the, the guys at Crossing Broad have done a great job at bridging the divide between, you know, the, the diehard Philly sports fan and the casual sports fan who loves barstool sports type people, right? Mm -hmm. Crossing Broad, those guys have done a great job. You know, Bob Wankel, all those guys over there, uh, Kevin Kincaid, they're all great. But I think the problem is, is that Anthony sometimes leans a little too far away from the media aspect at times. And I think for people like myself, I try to treat this microphone as a privilege. I don't try to treat it as an opportunity for me to say whatever I want, whenever I like and however I like. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are times that I will not talk about certain topics or I will not touch on certain issues, not because I'm afraid John Tortorella won't answer my question, but because I just don't think it's worth it. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think on one hand, I understand where Torts is coming from. He feels like there's a member of the media who is not basically living up to the standard that everybody else has for themselves. But on the other hand, Tortorella is a bit ridiculous because, you know, if, if it was such an issue, of him Anthony answering Anthony's questions. He's for me to say, answering Anthony's questions. Say it five times fast. Yeah, not going to happen. Um, yeah, uh, Tortorella should have just told the media people, don't let him in the press conference. Like, why are we going through these motions? Why are we going through either. this charade? If, if he's such a problem, get rid of the drama and don't let him in the room. 
Yeah, I mean, why? That was literally the first question of the press conference last night. It was from Anthony Sanfilippo, and what he said was completely valid because it's like every single press conference now, he'll go to ask a question, get shot down, or sometimes doesn't even bother to ask a question, and then somebody else will go and ask the question that was on his mind later, the question that he started before Tortorella shot him down. And obviously for the listeners, I mean, Josh, you and I know, but for the listeners that don't know why Tortorella is acting this way, Towards right. Anthony San Filippo, he made comments on his podcast when Cutter Gauthier, uh, what was supposed to be a great top Flyers prospect, when he was traded to Anaheim two months ago in January, he made comments inferring that Kevin Hayes had a ton of influence over Cutter Gauthier's ill feelings towards Philadelphia as a uh, big reason as to why Gauthier might have wanted out. They're both, they're both Boston College alums. Uh, K. Hayes has been in contact with Gauthier ever since the draft. So there was a bit of a connection there. But again, all kind of hearsay at that point. He talked about it on his podcast. Tortorella got word of it and now will not answer any of his questions. I think it's outright ridiculous. You know, the first few weeks after, I can get it. If you're trying to send a message, lay down the law on San Filippo as, you know, if you cover this team, you don't talk about those type of things. Or you don't make up those type of things, whatever the case may be. But now to be going on over two months, Josh, like you said, like if you don't want to answer his question, if you don't respect him as a part of the media – then simply request for him to not be in the room so you're not shooting the poor guy down every single time who's just trying to do his job. That's where I stand on it, but uh, we'll see how much longer this saga, like I said, the one-sided feud, the one-sided saga lasts. By the way, no one's talking about the other story from last night. Why Why does Scott Lawton and uh, Nick Deloria kiss each other on the cheek when they celebrated the win last night? Why did nobody bring that up? <laughs> There were too many big stories surrounding the team, I guess. The healthy scratch at Couturier, <laughs> the San Flippo thing again. And then him not even just you know going out and having an outburst on San Flippo, but other media members that were asking about Couturier's healthy scratch. He said, it's not about Sean. We won. The team played well tonight. Do you want to talk about tonight's win? Do you want to talk about tonight's game? And he wouldn't talk about why he healthy scratched the captain 34 days in to him, his term as captain. I mean, it's just... <sighs> It's the elephant in the room. It's the media's job to ask about it. But yet, no, let's talk about the game. Let's talk about the game. Whatever. All right, number two. Not a game. <laughs> yeah, it's not a game. Tortorella just, uh, he grinded a few of my gears last night, to say the least. Uh, number two, I do want to switch on over to some basketball, and definitely not NBA basketball here in the South Jersey and Philadelphia area, because it's not too pretty to be a Philadelphia 76ers fan. So let's talk about March Madness. The NCAA tournament is coming up. So, Josh, I have to ask you, we haven't talked about this even off the air, which team are you taking as your favorite to win March Madness and why and bracket type of guy? Well, uh, I will answer them in the order you asked. Um, I gave out my final four in the last hour because if you go by Ken Palm, 20 of the last 21 national champions have been both top 25 in offensive and defensive efficiency. There's only eight teams in the entire field that fit that criteria. So my four is from that eight. Okay. So my final four is UConn, Creighton, Arizona, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Houston. And I have, I have Houston winning it all. Okay, so Houston is your team, your final four. Arizona, Creighton, UConn, and Houston? Yes. All right. Not, not bad, not bad. I haven't gone as far to do a final four yet. I'm actually going to fill out my brackets tonight so I can get it in before tomorrow. And people call me a slacker. Yeah, well, shut up. You did your homework, all right? You, you have a lot of uh, shoes to fill over there at the Ocean Casino Studios. It's Ocean Casino Studios now, correct? That is correct, sir. Yes, that good is, job by you. you know, that's, that's terrific. I haven't been there in, in a – well, I was there on Sunday, but with you guys during the week in, in, a, in a, about a month. So I Well, you've sure never been possible. there with me, actually, but – I I have, actually, I thought. I thought I filled in for you while you filled in for Mike one day. But you Either were way, in the studio. I haven't been in the Ocean Casino studios. They're new and approved now. So, mm, yeah. uh, anyways, uh, where was I? Oh, the yes. other question you asked was: Is um, do I? I do fill out multiple brackets because I I have my bracket of what I think is going to happen. Okay. But I also have my bracket of what I want to happen because I kind of get yeah. my I, I I have a bracket to get all my emotional like who I want to mm. win, who I don't want to win. Like for example, I hate Purdue. To, to me, Purdue, I hate Purdue too. Zach Eady is such a fraud in my eyes. I yeah. cannot wait for him to crash and burn. So, like to me, I, I think I have like Purdue losing like the first round or something. Like, in wow. My, in my, in my like, I want to have. See, I don't know it. if I'd go that far because he's still a freak of nature in college, but his game is his bag for less, uh, lack of a better way to describe it. His you know on court abilities, it's just so frail. <laughs> 
so I mean, limited. The guy backs up a guy in the post. He'll do a nice hook shot. If not, he'll fake a hook and then go to a layup. Like it's just any free throw line. He kind of is able to do his thing there sometimes, but I just, that's the type of guy who's going to be, what is he? Seven, three. He'll probably go undrafted or be a late second round pick in the NBA draft and just absolutely dominate the G league, but never really get NBA minutes. It's so funny how college basketball, you can be dominant there, but then go to the NBA and just have no success whatsoever. Um, but anyways, my team I'm taking is Arizona going with Caleb loves guys. Uh, I'd like to see him lead that team to, you know, the national championship, especially with his story, you know, coming from, it was North Carolina, correct. And then correct. now landing over in Arizona with the Wildcats. So, that would be awesome to see for me. But like I said, still filling out my final brackets. Uh, I'll do that tonight. All right, number three. I want to talk some Phillies baseball and really the MLB in general. So with Phillies season just eight days away, opening day just eight days away against the Braves, Spencer Strider on the mound, by the way. Can't wait for that. Uh, Josh, what part of baseball season do you most look forward to when it comes around and why? Uh what do I look forward to? Is it like, like a Just general baseball question season or? in general? It doesn't have to be the Phillies. Doesn't have to be even Major League Baseball. Just baseball season in general. Well, baseball season is summertime, so summertime means late spring, early summer, sunshine, yeah. beach, hanging out with your buddies, going out, enjoying the fresh air, not being stuck inside. You know, driving around with the windows rolled down, like all that good stuff. So. Baseball is a lot of positive vibes for me. Yes. Um, I would say when it comes to the game itself, there there are two things that are great about baseball. One is when your team is not playing, there will be a team playing. And for example, on a Sunday afternoon, if the Phillies are on a like Sunday baseball, there's nothing better than putting a random baseball game on and just taking a nap while listening to it. I agree. It's like golf almost where it's just, you know, you can listen to it. You have no impact or no effect yep. of how the, you know, the game ends up resulting in, it doesn't affect you at all. So you can yep. just sit there, take a nice nap, wake up. Oh, okay. The uh, diamondbacks beat the brewers. Nice. I don't care. Yeah. I'm just watching this for some, for some exactly. therapy. I, yeah. I definitely agree with you. First thing I think of when baseball season comes around, it's just honestly spending time in the ballpark. Like I love to go to the games. That's one of the few sporting events where like the, outcome of the game won't really ruin my time Sixers game if they lose it's a bad team it's gonna ruin my time but if the Phillies lose against a bad team it's 162 so it really doesn't affect me that much in the regular season and I just love the vibes of the ballpark possibly getting on the jumbotron you know going with my girlfriend and just being there out in the in the nice weather so that's that's typically what I think of when baseball season comes around but yeah I hope Nick Castellanos owns Spencer Strider like he did in the uh playoffs on opening day this year that would be terrific <laughs> well right, listen, let's, let's take a quick break we'll come yeah, back with yeah, danny's next couple of questions here on five with danny rye here on the sports bash josh Eddie filling for mike gill he's danny ryan hanging out with you guys on a hump day wednesday on 97.3 espn it's the sports bash with mike gill keeping the fans entertained and happy on 97.3 espn and the 97.3 espn free mobile app People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket, just like our customer, Jaren. I'm the singer and guitarist in a band, and I use my Cricket phone for everything. It's basically like another band member. Don't miss a single beat. Switch today and get a free Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. Smile, you're on Cricket. Real customer paid for testimonial must bring your number to Cricket on up to a $60 a month voice plan depending on device. Select models only while supplies last. First month service charge and tax to its sale. Cricket 5G requires a compatible device and is not available in order. These terms and restrictions apply. See store for details. Hey, it's John Marks. Growing up here, I know that the fans get the last word. The fans have spoken and real Philly sports fans love the Bet Parks Casino and Sportsbook app. It's the only online casino and sportsbook app that I recommend. 24-7 live casino action. Join me now and download the Bet Parks app and all your favorite casino games are right at your fingertips bet on all your favorite sports philly hoops philly hockey college basketball and more odds bets slots and games right in your pocket play the hottest online slots or play blackjack roulette baccarat or texas hold'em with a live dealer right on your phone get winning on the bet parks app it's so simple new users join me right now just download the app and get up to one thousand dollars casino bonus back if you're not a winner in your first 24 hours details on the bet parks app or at betparks.com New users only. Casino bonus must be wagered. Terms and conditions apply. You must be 21 and in Pennsylvania or New Jersey. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. At Target, our prices for Easter are so low, you can put all your eggs in one basket. 
Surprise them with Target exclusive Favor Day treats, like our unique chocolate bunny and a cute basket, all from just $4. Add in some fun with a six pack of bubbles, 50 piece sidewalk chalk, and super soft stuffed animals, all from $5. And get great family pics with new Easter looks. It's easy with women's and girls' dresses for only $20 and under. Low prices on everything for Easter? Now that's Target. Two for two twenty two. Two for two twenty two. Drive home two new Kias at Matt Black Kia for just two twenty two per month. For the first time, get two new Kias for two twenty two at Matt Black Kia, where you can get a brand new twenty twenty four Kia Forte LXS for just one eleven per month lease with a zero security deposit and just thirty nine ninety five to its signing. With a price like that, why not get two for two twenty two? That's a brand new twenty twenty four Kia Forte twenty four month lease for one eleven per month, or drive home two for 222 both with Matt Black Kia's exclusive four day love and relief and return policy it's gotta be a Matt Black Kia with approved credit not all will qualify credit may affect down payment offers can't be combined go to Matt Black Kia and j.com for complete details or 888-505-6670 price includes all costs to be paid by consumer except for licensing registration and taxes through KMF 24 months 2011 per month 10,000 miles per year rebates and incentives to dealer expires 4224 Matt Black Kia 6211 Black Horse Pike Harbor Township, on Route 37 in Tom's River. Spring is in the air, but so are airborne allergens like tree pollen, grass, mold, and ragweed. If spring allergies keep you trapped inside, then you need Navaj Nasal Care to keep you breathing clearly and enjoying all the beauties of spring. Navaj helps clear nasal passages that are often clogged because of seasonal allergies. Navaj gently flushes a pure, refreshing saline solution through your nasal passages to clear out congestion, sucking out that springtime pollen and other irritants trapped in your nose. Navaj springs into action quickly, helping you breathe more clearly in just 30 seconds. And you don't need a never-ending cycle of decongestants that can leave you feeling drowsy. Navaj is the fast and easy drug-free allergy solution that helps you breathe easier, sleep better, enjoy your favorite springtime activities. Navaj is available online at navaj.com or in stores at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and Target. Navaj. N-A-V-A-G-E. Breathe easy. We have the perfect solution for sitting in traffic. You come with me. The Sports Bash with Mike Gill on 97.3 ESPN and the 97.3 ESPN free mobile app. Coming up in a few minutes, that opportunity for you to qualify. The final day for you to qualify for the Philly Strip to Baltimore contest presented by Philly Sports Trips. When you're the sounder, be caller number seven. And you are in for the Philly Strip to Baltimore. Remember, today is the Final day to qualify, and you must be present next Thursday at Maynard's in Margate. Philly's watch party with Mike Gill and the sports back. All right, back to five from Danny Rye. All right, let's do it. Continuing with some baseball talk. We mentioned yesterday on Five with Danny Rye that it's been an offseason to forget for Scott Boris and his free agent clients. As of today, two notable Boris clients still sit on the open market those clients being Jordan Montgomery and J.D. Martinez. J.D. Martinez just baffles me. Montgomery, I can understand. Martinez hit 33 home runs, 100-plus RBIs last year, in really not that many games. I know I get he's old, but you mean to tell me a team needing the DH wouldn't go ask for his services at the right price? Sure. Uh, anyways, Josh, my question for you is, do you think, with how this has just gotten so out of hand, I mean, even going back to the Machado-Harper free agency, do you think Rob Manfred needs to set a universal deadline for all players in MLB free agency? And if so, how early in the offseason would you set the deadline? Uh, there should be a deadline, but Manfred won't do it because he's a bit of a wimp. Um, the deadline, I would say, should be January 31st. What is it, January 31st? Whatever the last day of January is. Because to me, this whole thing of like, Spring change, spring training is five days away. Will he be there or not? Tune in to find out. Like, I, I hate that whole mentality. Like, there's no reason, like, for example, if, if you had a free agent in football or basketball or hockey and that guy was still available days for a training camp, mm -hmm. I guarantee that guy is already signed, sealed, and delivered. Yeah, it's ridiculous to me. I mean, free agency opens November sixth i mean it, essentially it opens the day after the world series which was november 2nd but they can't officially sign with the new team until november 6th to the point where we're in mid-march now we are a week away from 
regular season games starting and you have two well above average players in the market. Yep. I mean, represented by Scott Boris or not, still two above average players on the market with a few question marks, but it's not like, you know, it's DD Gregorius after his Philly stint out there. It's just, <laughs> it's ridiculous to me. So I think, you know, January 30th, 31st sounds like a great deadline. I wouldn't hate that at all. Even earlier, like let's talk mid-January, the 15th. Like, let's get these guys ready, moved in in their new state. You know, it's not, they're humans. It's not an easy process to go to a new team like that and then get them on some teams, man. I mean, there needs to be a, a deadline if you're Rob Manfred. You have to enforce that. Uh, but Rob's but also a wimp, so it probably won't get done. We'll see. I mean, he he's picked up his game recently as commissioner. I wouldn't call him the worst in all pro sports, but I mean, we'll see what, what he No, the worst in all that. pro sports is Gary Bettman, so. Yeah. And then Goodell, obviously, not not the greatest right now, but that's a whole other topic. All right, I know we're up against it, so I do want to switch over to the NFL. Speaking of Robert, Roger Goodell, uh, and you know, I mentioned yesterday Howie Roseman, the Eagles, they pushed uh, Hassan Reddick's deadline to where he needs to get that one million dollar roster bonus to April first. So I got to thinking today with the slow news day, Justin Simmons is still in rumors and is still linked to the Philadelphia Eagles. So my question for you, Josh, is. Would you rather pay Hassan Reddick and keep him on the Eagles for the next three to four years at the price he wants, or bring in former Broncos four-time second-team All-Pro and two-time Pro Bowl safety Justin Simmons on a two- to three-year deal? Oh, I would keep Reddick. This is easy for me because really? Reddick has double-digit sacks four straight years with four different defensive coordinators. That means that he is immune to everything like he is just going to go out there and do his job at bare minimum whereas Simmons I mean how is the age going to impact him you know he's coming to a new city I know we're with Fangio back in Denver but you know there, there's a lot more what ifs there mm -hmm. I, I have a proven commodity I know what I'm getting from Reddick at worst I'm going to get probably two to three more years of double digit sacks like I, I know what I'm getting out of him yeah, I mean, they're the same age. Uh, you know, I think Reddick's got a few months on Justin Simmons. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, the past few years, J.J. JJ Reddick, Hassan Reddick has put up better numbers than a guy like Justin Simmons Sixers has. Sixers could I mean, use J.J. Reddick at this point. 1,010%, but he's off doing podcasts with LeBron James, so <laughs> he's unavailable. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I tend to agree with you. I don't think it's as far away as a, a concrete of a decision as you do, but... Honestly, like you bring in a guy like Bryce Huff, you give him more money than Hassan Reddick. Hassan Reddick has clearly proven to be the better player over the past four years. And you kind of disrespect him in a way by giving Bryce Huff $17.5 million and you don't pay Hassan Reddick. I know his price tag has risen to about 25 mil now, but if you could have Bryce Huff, Josh Sweat, Hassan Reddick, Jalen Carter, maybe add another defensive tackle to replace Fletcher Cox on that D line, then I think they really become a threat like they were in the 2022 season. Whereas you could go get a guy a little bit less talented than Justin Simmons, slide him into that safety role, and then maybe push Reed Blankenship back to like a third safety. And I feel like you're just as good in that defense as if you were to have Justin Simmons. So we'll see what they end up doing. I hope Howie pays Reddick, uh, but it's looking more and more as the days go along that he will not. Anyways, Josh, thank you for your time. That was Five with Danny Rye. I'll talk to you next week. All right, Danny Ryan, catch him this weekend, the locker room with Billy Schwime Sunday on 97.3. ESPN. All right, you know what that sounder means. Caller number seven at 609-573-3776. 609-573-3776. Caller number seven. You are in as a qualifier for the Phillies trip to Baltimore contest. Thanks to Philly Sports Trips. But you can't get the contest if you don't be caller number seven at 609-573-3776. And then if you are caller number seven, you must be present next Thursday at Maynard's and Margate for Philly's opening day watch party at Maynard's and Margate with Mike Gill and the Sports Bash live on location. Call number seven at 609-573-3776. I'm Josh Hennig, Bill you for Mike Gill and Sports Special. Next hour coming up with your text messages on the other side.
97.3 ESPN has teamed up with Seize the Deal for incredible weekly offers from some fantastic local restaurants. Here's this week's big deal. Get a $50 gift card good for use at Jester's Dive Bar for just $25. Get this great deal starting Friday at 9 a.m. at SeizeTheDeal.com. Hurry, chances are this deal will sell quickly. For more info on this great deal, go to SeizeTheDeal.com. With GMF Financing, Qualified Buyers excludes Corvette, excludes prior sales. If you're waiting for the best deal on a new or pre-owned vehicle, stop waiting and listen to these incredible deals at Ben & Chevrolet during March Markdown, where you can save up to 20% on new Chevys. Yes, up to 20% savings with GM supplier employee pricing. Plus, you keep all the rebates. No games, no gimmicks. Just the best offer you'll find anywhere. Plus, there's available 1.9% financing. And Bennett is paying a whopping $10,000 dollars cash for any clunker towards any pre-owned vehicle in stock that, that is, is a minimum, minimum 10 grand, grand regardless, regardless of condition or mile then you imagine how much more you'll get for a good quality trade while bennett chevy offers the best deals you can find on any newer pre-owned vehicle you can always count on a wonderful tom buying experience with our non-commissioned sales team who are paid on your satisfaction not how much you spend nobody beats a bennett deal nobody together let's drive at bennett chevrolet egg harbor township and bennettchevy.com People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket, just like our customer, Jaren. I'm the singer and guitarist in a band, and I use my Cricket phone for everything. It's basically like another band member. Don't miss a single beat. Switch today and get a free Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. Smile, you're on Cricket. Real customer paid for testimonial must bring your number to Cricket on up to a $60 a month voice plan depending on device. Select models only while supplies last. First month service charge and tax to its sale. Cricket 5G requires a compatible device and is not available everywhere. Fees, terms, and restrictions apply. See store for details. Some people just know bundling with Allstate means big savings. Just like they know the right ingredient means big flavor. They know honey on pizza is where it's at. And olive oil on ice cream is the cherry on top. And they know when you bundle home and auto with Allstate, you can save up to 25%. Mm -mm. Bundled savings vary by state and are not available in every state. Saving up to 25% is the countrywide average of the maximum available savings off the home policy. All state vehicle and property insurance company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moment. It's the confidence and underdogs covering, the tension before a clutch turnover, and the pride of a parlay paying off. It's another chance to win big with all-day action. Plus, win your first $10 bet and get $125 in sports bonus bets. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet parts. Six twenty one in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Ohio, or Maryland. Gambling problem, 1-800-GAMBLING. Parks Casino, this is how you win. Action, great dining, and entertainment. Don't miss these world-class headliners coming to the Excite Center inside Parks Casino. Fems of Rock, May 17th, and Almost Queen, June 14th. For tickets and a complete list of upcoming shows, visit ParksCasino.com. Parks Casino, this is how you win. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Ask Sherwin-Williams during the March Spring Sale, March 15th through the 25th, and get 35% off paints and stains with prices starting at $28.92. That means 35% off our most popular color family, blue. Psychologists have found it to be soothing and relaxing, which makes it especially great for bedrooms and bathrooms. And, of course, get 35% off all of our other colors. Stop the sale online or visit your neighborhood Sherwin-Williams store. Retail sales only. Some exclusions apply. See store for details. Spring is in the air, but so are airborne allergens like tree pollen, grass, mold, and ragweed. If spring allergies keep you trapped inside, then you need Navaj Nasal Care to keep you breathing clearly and enjoying all the beauties of spring. Navaj helps clear nasal passages that are often clogged because of seasonal allergies. Navaj gently flushes a pure, refreshing saline solution through your nasal passages to clear out congestion, sucking out that springtime pollen and other irritants trapped in your nose. Navaj springs into action quickly, helping you breathe more clearly in just 30 seconds. And you don't need a never-ending cycle of decongestants that can leave you feeling drowsy. Navaj is the fast and easy drug-free allergy solution that helps you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel healthier. Get Navaj today so you can get outdoors and enjoy your favorite springtime activities. Navaj is available online at navaj.com or in stores at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and Target. Navaj. N-A-V-A-G-E.
Breathe easy. eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Attention lovebirds. Are you ready to take the next step in your journey together? Don't miss out on Sage Jewelers' exclusive engagement ring sale. Sage has the perfect ring to symbolize your everlasting love with up to 50% off on your exquisite collection of engagement rings. Hurry, this sale won't last forever. Visit Sage Jewelers today. Tilton Road, Northfield, or online at sagejewelers.com. Sage Jewelers. The ultimate expression of love. Home of the Sports Bash with Mike Gill, 97.3 ESPN, WENJ, WENJ HD, Millville, Atlantic City. This is the Sports Bash with Mike Gill on 97.3 Mobile App. Now live Casino Resort Studio. Here's Mike Gill. Josh Henry Clinton for Mike Gill here on the Sports Night 5 o'clock hour here on 97.3 ESPN. Still to come 20 minutes from now. Talk with Dave Weinberg, 97.3 ESPN.com sports columnist. Congratulations, Steve in Atlantic City. He is our latest qualifier for the Village of Baltimore contest. One more opportunity coming up. In about 50 minutes from now, again, all number seven, you get in for the Philly Trip to Baltimore contest with Philly Sports Trip. And then we'll see you next Thursday for Philly's watch party. Anyone come to the Philly's watch party, you'll just have to be a qualifier. You used to be a qualifier to win the prize. Win the prize. You just come from out and, I mean, Maynard's is a great place. Now you got the Philly's watch party going on. It's really a blast for me. I wish I could be. I'll be back here in the studio making sure everything runs. I'm like the man behind the curtain. You know, I'm like, um, I ever watch The Wizard of Oz when they pull back the curtain and there's the man behind the curtain? That's me, basically. There is no wizard. It's just me. <laughs> I'll get to your guys' text just a moment at 609 403 0973. We had some texts come in from uh, Danny Ryan and my conversation about a couple of things from last night. You know, it was, um, we, we covered a lot of great on, on the show. And one of the things Danny brought up about you know, baseball, and I, I see some texts coming in about my comments about Rob Manfred. You know, the, the reason why I'm so condescending about Manfred is because you know, there was a time in sports history where the commissioner, the manager, the general manager, the owner, whatever the job of these higher level people are, you were the man in charge. You were the shot caller. You were the guy who got things done. And in today's world, a lot of these guys are just beholden to somebody else. And it's very frustrating because, like, for example, we had numerous conversations last year here on the Sports Bash with Mike Gill on 97.3 ESPN. Mike Gill, every single day, like during Philly season, had to explain to people again and again and again and again that the manager doesn't make the lineup in the traditional sense. Like, historically, the manager has been the guy who... He'd write out the lineup and he walked the lineup car out to the umpire and they exchanged lineup cards and they'd say hello. They chat for the game. In today's world, Rob Thompson is not sitting in his manager's office painstakingly going through what the lineup is going to be and what his game plan is. No, he's got input from his coaches, from analytics, from the, what the GM says the lineup should be. There, there is a plethora of people who are involved in this process. And so, you know, today, Rob Manfred, in many, many ways, 
He's just a puppet. He's just a guy who's getting a fat paycheck to be the spokesman. That's basically what these guys are in today's world. They're not real decision makers, they're not real problem solvers. He, it's not like Rob Manfred is walking into a room with the players union and the owners and, you know, functioning as some sort of like, you know, I'm going to create compromise and win a Nobel Peace Prize. Like, no, he's he's employed by the owners. So and technically he's a spokesman for the league. And like Rob Manfred, he's not doing anything in a, in a unilateral fashion. Rob Manfred is not waking up in the morning saying, Kyle Schwarber's my leadoff hitter and everybody else can take a long walk on a short pier. I must curse on the radio there. It's a good thing I didn't. I caught myself. You know, he's not sitting there saying, you know, it's my way or the highway, you know. No, Rob Man Rob Thompson, like Rob Manfred, too many guys named Rob at this point in the conversation, but Rob Thompson, like Rob Manfred, he is a byproduct of the people who are influencing him or the people who gave him a job. And so Rob Thompson is not going up to Sam Fold and Dave Dombrowski and tell them to go pound sand. He's saying, all right, guys, we are in this together. You guys think that Trey Turner should be two, Schwarber should be one, and I got to do that. So th this idea that, you know, these guys in these positions of power are making unilateral decisions, I, I just don't respect it. And the reason why I be, and maybe listen, calling Manfred a wimp is, is a bit of an exaggeration, but it's the idea that Manfred is basically a, a puppet who doesn't actually stand for anything except what he's told to stand for. And so I understand Colin from May's landing, your, your issue saying, look, Rob Manfred put the biggest baseball rule change of the century through the pitch clock. Well, he didn't do it by himself. He got approval from the owners. The players union kind of like passive aggressively approved of it. You know, they didn't really want it, but they, they agreed to it on certain terms. You know, Manfred getting credit for the pitch clock is similar to when, you know, uh, a U.S. president gets credit for a legislation. A U.S. president doesn't sign a bill by himself. No, it goes through the Congress, it goes through the House of Representatives and the Senate, and then people in the president's staff tell him he should sign it or not sign it, and then he sits his rear end down and puts pen to paper. So, you know, yeah, in the most, you know, indirect sense possible, Rob Manfred and a, pre and a U.S. president are both responsible for good things happen happening during their administrations. But in no way am I going to be like, this was Rob Manfred getting the job done. Yeah. Nah, that's silly. Now, Colin from Maze Landing is right. You know, the setting free agent deadline for the offseason would need to be collectively bargained. He is correct. But again, if it gets collectively bargained, who really gets credit? We can give it to Rob Manfred. But... If it was collectively bargained, that means everybody was involved in the decision, right? I'm just saying. A couple more texts coming in here throughout the last couple of hours. We've talked a lot of things today. The Flyers, Colorado State blowing out Virginia last night in March Madness. Of course, more March Madness tonight. First four continues at 6.30 p.m. is the coverage right here on 97.3 ESPN. We've also talked about, I'll give you some uh, NCAA tournament bet picks a little bit later in the hour, but I gave you my final four earlier in the show. UConn, Arizona, Creighton, and Houston. Again, now here, I'll give you guys the full analytic breakdown really quick. Not the whole breakdown because I don't want to bore everybody to death because honestly, for as much as I love sports, even I think some of these deep stats are boring. Like, I'm the sports geek, and if I get lost in the, in the minutia of the numbers, it's pretty ridiculous. So we're, we're really trying to simplify this here for everybody. But so again, the, the criteria goes like this. 20 of the last 21 national champions have all been top 25 in offensive and defensive efficiency. Okay. So basically what it means is that they are well-balanced basketball teams offensively and defensively. So for this year's tournament, there are only eight teams that meet that criteria. 
UConn, Houston, Purdue, Arizona, North Carolina, Auburn, Creighton, Marquette. So I walked into filling out my bracket saying those are four teams I have to strongly consider advancing in the tournament because historically, those are the teams that win the national championship. Now, I think Purdue is a fragazi. I think they are fake. I think they are fraud. I think that Zach Eady is... He, he is the embodiment of what a great big man was in like 1970. He's not a great big man in today's game. He just happens to play in a mediocre conference in the Big Ten. I think the Big Ten is not a great conference. I, I don't think many teams are getting a get out of the first round for the Big Ten. For example, I think Michigan State loses to Mississippi State in their first round matchup. So... Of, of the eight teams I mentioned, I already throw Purdue out because for me, Purdue's losing in the second or third round no matter what, okay? After that, that's where I get a little interested because then I have seven teams left. I think teams like Auburn and Marquette can make deep runs, but I don't think either one of them are final four teams. North Carolina is the wild card to me because... If Baycott can get his head out of the sand, the big man for North Carolina, and Davis can go out there and play at the level that we expect him to, North Carolina should make a deep run. And Auburn has a ton of talent. I don't know if they can win a national championship, but I think they have a ton of talent. So that leaves us then with UConn, Houston, Arizona, and Creighton. My final four. I think Creighton is grossly underrated. I think people don't realize that if UConn wasn't the king of the Big East, that Creighton would have been probably the best team in that conference this year, okay? Creighton's got all the tools to have a deep playoff, a uh, deep tournament run. Arizona played in a conference where 70% of America never saw them play. Playing on the West Coast, playing in the Pac-12 in its final year, Arizona was overlooked. And realistically, the only reason why Oregon won the Pac-12 tournament is because they got absolutely on fire in the tournament. So I still think, as Danny Ryan mentioned earlier in the show, Caleb Love is going, Caleb Love is going to go out there and have himself a, a tournament, I think. So I agree with him on that. Then that brings me to my other two Final Four teams. UConn and Houston are hands down the two best teams in college basketball this year. And it really comes down to personal preference. It's very likely that you have a UConn-Houston national championship. I think that it's going to break down to whose guys show up in that game. And I hear what Jeff in Ocean City is saying on the text board at 609-403-0973 says, no, UConn will not go back-to-back. The odds of going back-to-back are very difficult. So I understand that in the grand scheme of things, the likelihood of UConn winning the national championship is extremely low. Maybe not in terms of betting odds, but in terms of real-world odds. But you can't ignore the fact that They play like a team. They play like a five-man unit, and so does Houston. I think that the two teams that can probably overcome most problems that they encounter in this tournament are UConn and Houston. The issue UConn is going to run into on their way to the tournament is the fact that they play in not an easy bracket. So when you're listening to the NCAA tournament next four days on 97.3 ESPN from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Keep in mind that UConn does not have an easy way to the final. Houston probably has an easier go of it, okay? Because here's the problem for UConn. First of all, they played... They're probably going to play FAU in the next round. FAU was seen they played in the national championship game last year. So they're playing a team that is experienced 
and recognizes them and sees them easily, right? They're also on the same bracket as Auburn. Auburn, talented team, inconsistent, but talented team. And theoretically, Auburn, if they play their best game, could beat UConn, all right? And all it takes is one game. Iowa State, very talented team, in the same bracket as UConn. They could give them a scare. And by the way, so could BYU. BYU and Iowa State both have the type of talent that could give UConn a scare. So that's why I don't see, I understand that it's not a guarantee that UConn is winning a championship. And I'm not guaranteeing that Houston wins it either, even though they're my pick to win the national championship. Houston still has to get by a couple of different landmines. They may face Duke on the way. Duke could give them some problems because of Duke's length, right? You could see a team like Kentucky give Houston problems because Kentucky is all gas, no break. They are full throttle offense. They could outscore Houston. They could literally just say, we are not going to play defense. We are going to dare you to stop us. And Houston might lose that, lose that matchup. And then you have Marquette. Marquette is an incredibly talented team that is also like Auburn been very inconsistent this year. All they need is one good game. The other reason why UConn cannot win a national championship is also who they would face in the Final Four. Now, I have Arizona coming out of the West bracket, but there's a reason why North Carolina is number one. They are very good, but so is St. Mary's. And to me, the winner of North Carolina and St. Mary's is probably going to determine who comes out of the West bracket. St. Mary's, you heard Jeff Nadu tell Mike Gill earlier this week here on the Sports Bash that St. Mary's was his preseason Final Four pick. That means that a college basketball savant like Jeff Nadu sees St. Mary making a deep run. So if he sees St. Mary making a deep run, so do I. And I think it's going to be North Carolina and St. Mary who is going to determine who Arizona has to face on their side of the bracket. Because Arizona actually has a much easier run than almost anybody else. There's nobody that Arizona is going to face on their way to the regional final that should scare them before they would see St. Mary or North Carolina. So I totally get where you guys are coming from. It totally makes sense. Uh, from Dan from EHT, I see your text. I see others coming in. As well, Jack from KMA Courthouse. A um, lot of good stuff there from you guys. We got to get the break. Coming up next, Dave Weinberg for a Weinberg Wednesday. And then we'll rattle off all your texts. Jack and KMA Courthouse, Dan and EHT. I'll get to you guys and more coming up here on 97.3 ESPN. Josh Hennig hanging out with you on a hump day Wednesday afternoon. Listen to all the madness. Seconds. Game is over. March Madness is coming to 97.3 ESPN. Your luxury BMW experience is closer than you think. Take advantage of exceptional savings at BMW of Atlantic City. Stop in and shop your favorite models, including the new BMW 2 Series, X3, and more. We're sure to have a vehicle that fits your needs. And with Acceleride, purchase your vehicle online and we'll deliver it directly to you. Looking to trade? We'll pay top dollar for your current vehicle. Experience luxury today at BMW of Atlantic City. Closer than you think. In Egg Harbor Township. Shop our complete inventory online at BMWAtlanticCity.com. My wife and I both, we ended up mildly sick for a few months and the nasal congestion was probably the worst part. I had like a post-nasal drip, just super congested all the time. We were taking everything we possibly could, but nothing really worked. Kyrie was miserable until a friend recommended Navage. Navage offers immediate drug-free congestion relief, flushing your nasal passages with refreshing saline and sucking out mucus, germs, and other airborne irritants. Don't live in misery this cold season. Use Navage so you can breathe easier, sleep better, and feel your best right away. The biggest thing Navage has done has completely cleaned out my nasal passages. It was from the first use. I was able to just clear out anything that was stopping me from breathing correctly. Navage helps me clear the way literally clear the way for me to operate better in the rest of my life. Experience the Navage difference yourself. Navage is available at Navage.com or at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. 
People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket, just like our customer, Paul. I run a farm with my family, and thanks to Cricket 5G, I know they can reach me, even when I'm out walking our dog, Valentine. Good dog, Valentine. Big nationwide 5G. Get fast 5G on four lines for only $25 per month each. Smile, you're on Cricket. Real customer pay for testimonial. Discounts vary per line. Cricket 5G requires a compatible device. It's not available everywhere. Fees, terms, and restrictions apply. See store for details. It's buyback March at Matt Black Nissan. So bring any trades because AJ the Trade Man wants to buy your vehicle today. AJ pays $500 more than CarMax, so you get more dough for your ride. A brand new Sentra for just $199 per month lease with zero security deposits. Only Matt Black Nissan has a four-day love it or leave it return policy. Oh, yeah, it's on at Matt Black Nissan. Or drive home with zero down and zero interest for 72 months. Plus, current Nissan owners get $1,000 owner loyalty cash back on every clearly marked new Nissan in stock. Have a job clearing four fifty per week? We want to approve you today. And AJ wants your trade, but only at Matt Black Nissan. Oh. With qualifications exist with approved credits. 1389 per thousand finance. Not all qualified. Go to MacLeadDeason.com for complete details or calling 4491747758. Price includes all costs to be paid by consumer except for licensing, registration, and taxes. Central Fan. RY 201059. Reselling price 24579. Expires 4624. It's on at MacLeadDeason on the Black Horse Pike. Harbor Township. Find what you love. Love what you find. A total wine and more. There's so much waiting for you. Spirits and beer. Thousands of wine. Drink responsibly, B21. Powered by the all new Bet Parks New Jersey Casino and Sportsbook app, betparks.com. This is the Town Square New Jersey Info and Weather Network. 76ers face the Suns, the Phillies play the Orioles, and the Flyers have the night off. This is Danny Ryan with your South Jersey Sports Center. The 76ers head west for a tough four-game road trip starting tonight against Kevin Durant and the Phoenix Suns. Listen to the game live from Arizona right here on 97.3 ESPN. Coverage starts at 10 p.m. After a big win last night at home, the Flyers will head to North Carolina tomorrow night for a battle with the Hurricanes. You can listen to the game live right here on 97.3 ESPN. Coverage starts at 7. And the Phillies send Taiwan Walker to the mound tonight against the Baltimore Orioles. First pitch is at 6.05. For more Eagles, Sixers, Phillies, and Flyers, download our free mobile app. Your forecast is next. Want healthier relationships, healthier gatherings, healthier workouts? Stay up to date on your flu and COVID shots. Getting vaccinated makes everything you do healthier. Learn more at nj.gov slash health slash vaccines. From the Town Square, New Jersey Info and Weather Network, I'm Chief Meteorologist Dan Zarrow. Temperatures take another little tumble for tomorrow and Friday, another taste of February chill, and then a coastal storm is brewing for the first half of the weekend. Clearing skies tonight, it'll be cold and breezy. Low temperature, 29. Wind chill may dip into the teens. Mostly sunny tomorrow, it's back to blustery. High of only 44. Sunday clouds Friday, high 48. Saturday looking rainy and windy. Get weather 24-7 wherever you are. Download our free mobile app today. This is an important safety message from the New Jersey Division of Highway Traffic Safety. Did you know that driving under the influence of marijuana is illegal? Driving high will get you a DUI. And if you're wondering if law enforcement can tell you're driving high, well, everyone can. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high. Get a DUI. A message from the New Jersey Division of Highway Traffic Safety. It's the Sports Bash with Mike Hill. Josh, any playing for Mike Hill here on 97.3 ESPN. I will get to Jack at KMA Courthouse and Danny H. I don't like the short change when people actually send in like thought out text messages. But before we get to you guys, as promised, Dave Weinberg is here for a Weinberg Wednesday. He usually joins me an hour from now on game night each Wednesday on 97.3 ESPN. But he's kind enough to join us a little bit earlier. And of course, he and I didn't talk on the radio last week because of all this college basketball. I got to that you. Uh, how invested or not invested are you in this year's March Madness? Hey, Josh. Good to talk to you again. Um, mildly, um, I didn't fill out a bracket yet. I, I hope to, I'm going to do that tonight, probably. Um, I, I'm kind of disappointed because my App State Mountaineers didn't get an invitation. They're stuck in the NIT today playing Wake Forest, so I'm a little bummed about that. Okay. And uh, But um, 
Yeah, like I, I'm mildly interested. I I, I think UConn's probably going to win it again. Um, although they're not, they're probably not as big a favorite as South Carolina in the women's bracket. But um, I yeah, I'll you know I this is one of my favorite times of year. Even if I don't have money on it or if I'm not in a bracket, I always watch Thursday and Friday, especially just to see if there's any upsets. Oh, there will be upsets. I oh, I sure. guarantee you, I, especially oh, yeah. with uh, Kansas versus Sanford. That's that that's the pick, man, because. Kansas, I heard somebody picked them, yeah. Well, Kansas is is without their best player, and oh. they're going to be playing at altitude against a Sanford team that all they do is run. They are they are like a high flying running team. So huh. you put it, you put a team in Kansas that is already short handed in altitude against a running team, they're probably going to lose. Well, I guess I'm going to have to make a little visit to Bet MGM then, huh? <laughs> <I don't> no. <know. laughs> um. With that being said, you know, it's very interesting, Dave, because, you know, this time of year, it's usually we're always talking about college basketball. But, man, yeah. the the NFL has completely taken over this month. Like, this has been like the quietest NFL day we've had in like four weeks, it feels like. Yeah, it, yeah. There's been a slew of moves. That's true. Yep. Yeah. So, like, you know, for you, as someone who covered the Eagles for a long time, you know, are you at least a little surprised that like the Eagles went like all in in free agency like they have? Yeah, I am a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was clear that they needed to make some changes, but I didn't expect this many. Um, I didn't expect them to, you know, sign what they signed. Like they've signed like 10 players, I think maybe yeah. to be a free agency in draft. And mm -hmm. uh, that that's a huge amount of, of uh, turnover for a team that um, has been in the playoffs three straight years. But considering the way they fell off the cliff at the end of last year, I guess um, we shouldn't be shocked about it. I'm just surprised at the sheer number of uh, of uh, players they brought in. Yeah, me too. It's the volume. It's not even who it is. It's the volume of guys. Like if you like, mm -hmm. I remember a couple of years ago, like the big deal was like, hey, they got a Sod Reddick, right? And then there was like barely anything for a couple of weeks, you know. Whereas mm -hmm. this year, it's like it's Barkley, it's CJ. It's um, it's Bryce Huff. It's all these guys, bang, bang, bang. And then even yesterday, it's like, oh, and by the way, we brought in like Oren Burks for the 49ers, a linebacker. I'm like, what are they start signing linebackers? Like, what is going on here? Yeah, they're they're clearly um, I, I got to give them credit. They seem to be addressing the the weaknesses that everybody knows that they have. Uh, you know, whether it be corner, well, they haven't signed a corner yet, but Not linebacker, yet. linebacker, safety, um. Wide receiver, not even sign a wide receiver. Okay, never mind. <laughs> but anyway, running back, running back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. But they oh, did sign a receiver. They they signed Devontae Parker. So you were. Oh yeah, go. I'm sorry. You're right. Correct. Okay, you're right. And um, you know, the the guys they signed are not necessarily like um superstars, except for maybe Barkley. But um, they're better than what they had, which is the most important thing. They right. you know they absolutely stunk in the in the back seven last year so to upgrade upgrade that you know as much as you can i thought that was the real plus for them for you i i've heard a lot of people asking this question you know what would how much do you think because my opinion is it has had a big impact how much do you think kellen moore being here has impacted some of these moves because like i gotta think that kellen moore came here like big fangio and said look i'll take this job but i gotta do it with a certain you got to check off my checklist here. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, yeah, backup quarterback, I guess, is probably important, you know, pretty important. I was surprised that Kenny Pickett would come. Uh, it sounds like he didn't have a choice, but I'm surprised that he, he still came here. But, yeah, they they seem to, over the years, they always sign a veteran, uh, a so-called veteran quarterback to to, uh, to wait in the wings, whether it's, um, you know, Marcus Mariota, Gardner Minshew, what have you, Nick Foles, a couple years before that. And uh, it's usually turned out pretty well. So. You know, hopefully Kenny won't be needed, but if he is, then um, they seem to have a pretty good uh, backup in place to, to to take over if they need to. And uh, I, I know I'm pro I know I'm in the vast minority here, but I would not have gotten Barkley. I would have kept DeAndre Swift. Uh, that's just, but that's just me. I know that most people think differently. Excuse me. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's the idea that I look at Barkley. I know it's not the same, but I kind of it gives me a very Ricky Waters feel. Where it was like when they when they brought him in the '90s, it's like he, he's he's a big name, he's been productive, he's a regional local guy, and they're basically like swinging for the fences with that kind of running back. 
Not as regional and local as DeAndre Swift. <laughs> True, but Swift is not as big a name as Barkley. Yeah, yeah. Although, I mean, I I just don't. I know everybody's saying Barkley's the more well-rounded back, and he's a good blocker and, you know, pass protection. You didn't sign him to protect the quarterback. You signed him to run the football, right? So, is he going to be sharing carries with Gainesville again, like Swift was forced to? I mean, oh, I, hope I, so. I, I just would have given Swift a shot to work with Kellen Moore. You know, it was clearly that uh, um, I can't remember the offensive coordinator's name now. But anyway. Brian Johnson. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe that was the problem with DeAndre Swift. He wasn't used properly at all. Everybody can agree on that. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I, I would have liked to have seen him in Kellen Moore's system and what he would have done. And it would have been less money, too. Uh, that That is true. Dave Weinberg joining us for a Weinberg Wednesday extra point columns over at 97.3 ESPN.com. You know, it's interesting because, you know, I, I looked at Swift as a guy. I agree with you. He was not used properly. But as I said previously, I just, I feel like that these guys who have these jobs right now, Kellen Moore on offense and Vic Fangio on defense, Dave, like these are guys with a ton of experience. Like they, yeah. they don't, they don't need the Eagles. You know what I mean? Like some right. of these coaches, they need a team to land with. Kellen Moore could have gone anywhere. Vic Fangio could have gone anywhere or retired, for goodness sake. You know? Yeah, true, Whereas, true. You know, I, I feel, and I, I don't think that either one of them is, like, demonstrative the way I'm describing it, but, like, mm -hmm. I just feel like Kellen Moore walked into Howie Roseman's office with Nick Sirianni and said, guys, I got to tell you, I see some huge problems with some of the stuff you were doing last year. And sure, you, sure. you, you have to go out and... and Give me some more weapons. Like you got to do something, you know, mm -hmm. like, like for example, like I can totally see him being like, if you bring Quez Watkins back, I will not play him. Oh you know yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I hear my, I'm with you there. Yeah. Definitely sure. You know, yeah. I, I, I can totally see him saying like, you know, Hey, Boston Scott's a cute story, but like, he doesn't fit what I want to do. You know what I mean? Like I can mm -hmm. totally see him saying like, Hey, if Jason Kelsey's retiring, you got to go out and get a guy like Matt Hennessy to be the backup. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can yep. totally see a guy, and say with Fangio in defense, I can totally see Fangio walking in and being like, I don't care you don't have a history of linebackers. Go and add, like, 20 random dudes, and I'll make it work. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I yeah, can yeah. see these, these veteran coordinators, not that they're telling Howie Rose how to do his job, but they're explaining to these guys, here's the reason why you guys struggled last year. If you want me to fix it, you got to give me the tools to fix it. Yeah, yeah, definitely true. Yep, especially on defense. Yeah, I'm with you there. Thousand percent. I mean, I never thought in my wildest dreams that a guy the Eagle fans actually wanted would be signed. I mean, how many Eagle fans that's all Devin White, Devin White, and they they go out and sign him? Like when when was the last time Eagle fans asked for something and they got it, Dave? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's pretty rare. That's for sure. I mean, I think the last time maybe was when people wanted Jeremiah Trotter to come back. What was that? Like two thousand four? <laughs> Remember that? Well, they kind of, they kind of wanted Reddick, I guess, right? So they got got in, but yeah. But I'm yeah, waiting, well, yeah. it's been a while though. You're right. Mostly. Yeah people clamoring for somebody yep the, the reddick thing perplexes me too like i don't understand there there's got to be <laughs> something that we don't know with that josh i've been talking about this with people for like two weeks now i just don't get like why like how how can one good year right 10 sacks last year mm -hmm. reddick would have got 12 if he hadn't been dropping into coverage 75 percent of the time and having to cover tight ends and running backs and what have you if you're going to just this guy's supposed to be a pure pass rusher, can't do anything else, right? Right. Well, turn Reddick loose. Share and Josh Shred Sweat loose. Let them do the, what this guy was going to do. I don't understand them. I, that's the one move that really bothered me. Now one of these guys is going to have to be let go, right, or traded. And that's, right. well, that it, makes no it, sense to me. Yeah, well, the, the report from Jeremy Fowler, I believe it was yesterday or the day before. I, I lose track of my days, honestly. It's all blurring together at this point. But um, sure. Jeremy Fowler of ESPN reported, it was confirmed by like five other people, basically, after he reported it, that you know basically the Eagles and Reddick's people agreed to push back his roster bonus. So, okay. he, he, so he can be traded, and the Eagles will have to pay him the million-dollar roster bonus. So... It appears that he's the odd man out because they restructured Josh Sweat's contract so yes. he could stay. So, I mean, I, I guess barring whoever they could draft in the draft or add one more guy in free agency, Dave, it looks like your pass rushers next year are Bryce Huff, Josh Sweat, Nolan Smith, and Brandon Graham. And I guess it looks okay, but like I'm not, 
I'm not thrilled. Let's put it that way. No, I'm not either. I think I would rather have Reddick. In fact, I know I would rather have Reddick just on what he did two years ago. And I don't think that was just like a one year flash. I think he's really a good, I think he's a very good player. And I, I would have rather kept him. No offense yeah. to Huff, but maybe he will go out and have 12 sacks. I don't know. I don't see it happening, but it could happen. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, I, I will say this about the Eagles. You know, they they do have a track record of finding guys sometimes. So, yeah, you know, may, maybe maybe there is something to Huff. And he is younger than Reddick, so I, I'm sure that had, that went into it because you, you, know, you know as well as anyone, Dave, their history of wanting guys under a certain age. Except for Brandon Graham, right? <laughs> right, except for Brandon Graham. Well, he, well, he, he's on the retirement tour, so he took the super discount to just hang right, around right. on the roster and and walk around the locker room and tell guys how to be professionals. <laughs> That's right, senior citizen discount. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. He's he's uh he's actually not here to play any games. He's just here to walk around and tell the young guys to grow up. You know. <laughs> And there's something uh, to be said for that. You need you need guys like that, so maybe that, you will. That is true. I mean, well, with Kelsey and Fletcher retiring, somebody old has to be in there, right? Yeah, right. That's the truth. Yep. I mean, poor Lane Johnson is probably is like the the scene with John Travolta. Where he walks in the room, looking around, like, "Where is everybody?" You know, that's how Lane probably feels. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, Dave, I do want to ask you uh, a baseball question, real quick, because, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're we're basically a week away from opening day for the Phillies, and. Uh -huh. You know, it looks like Johan Rojas is going to have to start the year at AAA because he is struggling yeah. in spring training. Yes. So which of these two scenarios would Dave Weinberg prefer the Phillies do? Would you rather have Brandon Marsh in center and Whit Merrifield in, in left field opening day? Or would you put Christian Pache in center and then put Brandon Marsh in left on opening day? Hmm. Pache in center, I think. Because um, of the defense? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I think he's a he's a pretty good player, too. Yeah, I mean, I I think I would do that. Is Marsh, like, fully recovered from his injury? Apparently. I mean, he's running around, yeah. fielding balls. He's he's played a few games already. I believe he's played, what, four games so far? So Yeah, it looks like his beard and hair are in mid-season form, so that's good. Well, yeah, it's as greasy as ever. I mean, he's, you know, that, that's. Oh, gosh, that's disgust me. But anyway. But um, <laughs> I, I I saw him run down that one ball in left field, and he he got there pretty easy. So I, I think he's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Marsh is a pretty good center fielder, too, though. I don't know about. And Whit Merrifield's good. That's that's a tough uh, that's a tough choice to make, Josh. I don't, I'm not really sure which way I would go now that I think about it. See, um, I, I would go Marsh and Merrifield because I think Merrifield okay. is is the hitter with the better resume than Pache does. Yeah, there and you that, go. Yeah. And that way Pache can be the right handed guy to come in for Marsh when the left handed pitcher comes in. You sold me. All right, I sold you. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can sell ice to an ice Eskimo, but I sold you in the Phillies lineup at least. Yep, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dave, before I let you go, I, I just wanted to give you a moment. Um, you wrote a great article about the passing of Pop down there oh, in, in Lower. And I just wanted to give you the opportunity to kind of just, you know, you know, say what you wanted to say. Because it was a it's it's a very thought out article. And I, I know for some people in today's world, reading long articles, they're they're too impatient. So I figured I'd give you the opportunity to just kind of, you know, speak your mind on on the subject for a moment. Oh, I really appreciate that, Josh. Yeah, Ralph uh, Pops Rigitano was a near and dear friend to me, meant a lot to me, uh, both as a baseball player and as a as a person. Um, he, I played for him in the uh, old ACBL uh, and the uh, for the Cape May Whalers. But uh, if, if you read the column, I'm encourage people to do that if they can. Um, he was kind enough to write. I was fortunate enough to throw a no hitter my senior year of high school, and uh, my dad couldn't make the game. Because uh, it was in Ocean City, it was an away game, and uh, but Ralph was there recruiting players for the new um, ACBL team, and he encouraged me every inning. You know how you know how traditional baseball people are. You know, keep the mojo going, and he kept repeating the same phrase to me, and let's go throw strikes. And then after the game, I was uh, he wrote a a very touching, thoughtful letter to me which, you know, totally took me by surprise. And I kept that letter for, gosh, 25, 30 years. I'm not sure what happened to it, but, I mean, it's still in my heart, and uh, that's the most important thing. But, yeah, uh, Ralph, unfortunately, passed away uh, a few days ago, and uh, may you rest in peace. But, yeah, I'll always remember the impact he had and the, and the influence he had on me. And, of course, folks, can read the whole 
A whole all the details over at 97.3 ESPN. Dot com. Dave, I always appreciate you jumping on. Uh, enjoy the tournament for what it is, and uh, go put something on Stanford, okay? All right. Thanks, Jess, as always. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks again for giving me the chance to talk about Pops. Absolutely. No problem. Josh Henning filling in for Mike Gill here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. All right. So, we got a bunch of texts to get to. Dan from EHT. I got Jack and KMA Courthouse. Get to you guys and more coming up next on 97.3 ESPN. It's the Sports Bash with Mike Gill. And I am the voice of the voiceless. On 97.3 ESPN and the 97.3 ESPN free mobile app. Two for 222. Two for 222. Drive home two new Kias at Matt Black Kia for just 222 per month. For the first time, get two new Kias for 222 at Matt Black Kia, where you can get a brand new 2024 Kia Forte LXS for just 111 per month lease with a zero security deposit and just $39.95 to its signing. With a price like that, why not get two for 222? That's a brand new 2024 Kia Forte, 24 month lease for 111 per month or drive home two for 222 both with Matt Black Kia's exclusive four day love and leave return policy it's gotta be a Matt Black Kia with approved credit not all will qualify credit may affect down payment offers can't be combined go to mattblackkia.nj.com for complete details or 888-505-6670 price includes all costs to be paid by consumer except for licensing registration and taxes through KMF 24 months 2011 per month 10,000 miles per year rebates and incentives to dealer expires 4224 Matt Black Kia 6211 Black Horse Pike Harbor Township on Route 37 in Tom's River. Sneezing, coughing, a stuffy nose, runny nose, post-nasal drip, interrupted sleeping. I just I was groggy at the end of the day. Allergies and sinus congestion were making Jana miserable. Then a friend recommended Navage. Navage provides immediate drug-free congestion relief, flushing your nasal passages with refreshing saline and sucking out mucus germs and other airborne irritants. Navage helps you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel your best right away. Navage gave me instant relief. I didn't have to wait 30 minutes. I didn't have to wait an hour, 90 minutes. I didn't have to wait. I didn't have to wait a minute. I just, I ran the rinse and I felt immediately, I felt better. Stop suffering from congestion and start breathing and feeling your best again with Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. I've had people ask me how I find relief and I tell them Navage immediately. This thing is amazing. Navage is available at Navage.com or at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe that every sport should be epic. Every basket, every game, every point, every play. From the moments that are legendary to the ones that fly under the radar. Whether it's a three-pointer at the buzzer to tie the game or a player goes two for two at the foul line. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. 21 plus only must be present in New Jersey. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Terms and conditions apply. Some people just know there's a better way to do things, like bundling your home and auto insurance with Allstate, or hiring someone to move your piano instead of doing it yourself. So do things the better way. Bundle home and auto and save up to 25% with Allstate. Bundled savings vary by state and are not available in every state. Saving up to 25% is the countrywide average of the maximum available savings off the home policy. Allstate Vehicle and Property Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Go for the pulse and the pools. Go for the hot streak and the hot tubs. Go for a relaxing massage and for wild nights with your entourage. Go to play all day and to dance all night. Go for the rooms with the ocean views that go on forever. Go for paradise with a pair of dice. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Must be 21 or older, party responsibly. Gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket, just like our customer Paul. I run a farm with my family, and thanks to Cricket 5G, I know they can reach me, even when I'm out walking our dog, Valentine. Good dog, Valentine. Big nationwide 5G. Get fast 5G on four lines for only $25 per month each. Smile, you're on Cricket. 
Real customer pay for testimonial. Discounts vary per line. Cricket 5G requires a compatible device. It's not available everywhere. Fees, terms, and restrictions apply. See store for details. With GMF financing, qualified buyers excludes Corvette, excludes prior sales. If you're waiting for the best deal on a new or pre-owned vehicle, stop waiting and listen to these incredible deals at Bennett Chevrolet during March Markdown, where you can save up to 20% on new Chevys. Yes, up to 20% savings with GM supplier employee pricing. Plus, you keep all the rebates. No games, no gimmicks. Just the best offer you'll find anywhere. Plus, Plus, there's available 1.9% financing. And Bennett is paying a whopping $10,000 cash for any clunker towards any pre-owned vehicle in stock. That, that is, is a minimum, minimum 10 grand, grand regardless, regardless of condition, of condition or, or miles. Can you imagine how much more you'll get for a good quality trade? While well, Bennett Chevy offers the best deals you can find on any newer pre-owned vehicle, you can always count on a wonderful calm buying experience with our non-commissioned sales team who are paid on your satisfaction, not how much you spend. Nobody beats a Bennett deal. Nobody. Together, let's drive at Bennett Chevrolet, Egg Harbor Township, and BennettChevy.com. You're listening to The Sports Bash with Mike Gill on 97.3 ESPN and the free mobile app. All right, Josh Eddick here, finishing out the 5 o'clock hour here for Mike Gill on 97.3 ESPN. Remember, no Sports Bash, no game night Thursday and Friday. We have just the NCAA tournament on tap for all you guys here on 97.3 ESPN. And of course, on the 97.3 ESPN mobile app, you hear all the action right here on your home for March Madness. All right, we get to these text messages here, and I'll get you some of my picks, my favorite bets for the NCAA tournament first few days coming up momentarily. But as promised, I want to get to the text at 609-403-0973. Um, I, I said we'll get to Danny HT. Uh, Dan says, I was intrigued with the Colorado State game last night after the Flyers. My son wanted to turn it on, but I said, I said, this is historic. Virginia may never score again. They were on <laughs> 14, 10, they were on 14 for 10 plus minutes when they scored. We turned the Denver game on, of course. Virginia game was the equivalent of the Eagles-Giants game. <laughs> the last day of the year, that was pathetic. Yeah, it, it was bad. I'll give you that. It was it was special. It was specially bad. <laughs> uh, Jeff Nosha City says, it's been a long time since the team West of Mississippi won it all to so scratch Arizona. Well, Jeff Nosha City, remember, the last team that won was Arizona, West of Mississippi. So if anybody could do it again, wouldn't that mean it's Arizona? Just a thought. Uh, Jack Gamey Courthouse says this is literally every commissioner in every sport. None of them change rules or do things for their sport. People agreeing on voting on things don't really understand what you're talking about. And yes, um, Rob Thompson does make the Phillies lineup every night. Yes, they'll get suggestions from people, but in the end, he has final say. Don't get the comparison. Sorry, Jack Gamey Courthouse. Well, it, it's been confirmed by a lot of people that. Rob Thompson doesn't make the lineup as a the the whole point is that in the traditional sense, like Joe Torrey back in the day, or Bobby Cox, or Sparky Lyle, or Sparky Anderson, or any any of these old school managers, uh, Earl Weaver, um, Cito Gaston. I don't know why I thought of Cito Gaston, but I did. But these guys would make the lineup, and they'd have no input, nobody telling them what they should or shouldn't do. In today's baseball, the front office has a huge say in the day-to-day -day lineup. They basically will sit down with Rob Thompson and basically say, hey, th these are the uh, analytics people say, these are the matchups we like, this is the game plan for tonight. And then Rob Thompson is, he part of his job is to execute their vision. So my comparison to the commissioner is, is that the, the commissioner is as responsible for a rule change happening as anyone can be who is an extension of a larger group. Rob Manford is not acting as, as a solo act. Now, look, some of this is perception because Jack, you came in courthouse. You say Rob Thompson, he has final say. Well, he doesn't literally have final say, you know, Dave Dombrowski has confirmed that, you know, Rob Thompson meets with the front office and they discuss the lineup before they put it out. So, Reading that what you will. All right. So I got some picks before we get out of here. 
So here we go. Uh, I like Colorado tonight, minus three and a half. I think that they take out Boise State. I think Colorado actually wins over Florida in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Of course, I dropped all my notes on my phone because I am a smooth operator over here on 97.3 ESPN. <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. Um, all right, some other picks I like in the tournament. Uh, I also like the under 130 and a half for Michigan State versus Mississippi State tomorrow. That's going to be a, a, an all-out rock fight, basically. That's what that's going to be. Um, I like McNeese to cover the six and a half against Gonzaga. Gonzaga is not as good as they used to be. I like South Dakota State to cover the 16 and a half against Iowa State. Iowa State will win that game, but it'll be, you know, as Lee Corsa would say, it'll be close. It'll be closer than you think. Also, St. Peter's plus 21 and a half versus Tennessee. Tennessee is not elite. They're very good, but they're not elite. They will not be able to crush them and send them out of there easily. I also like North uh, North Carolina State to cover the five and a half tomorrow versus Texas Tech. I say take Sanford on the money line, uh, but if you're uncomfortable with that, take the seven and a half. It, it's, it's a pretty safe bet because of the fact that Kansas is without their best player and they are going to be shorthanded. Friday games, I like Yale plus 12 and a half against Auburn. These really good teams always seem to struggle at the very beginning of the tournament. So it's always good to catch a team early when it comes to the odds makers out there. So take Yale. Yale's got a great big man. They got some good interior presence, plus 12 and a half against Auburn. I like Nebraska to cover the one and a half spread against Texas a and I think Nebraska is just the better team in that situation. I think James Madison upsets the number five Wisconsin Badgers in the tournament. If, you don't, if you're not that bold enough to take him outright, plus five and a half on the spread. Also, Grand Canyon has a really good team. They're very underrated. Give me the plus five and a half against St. Mary's. They're going to give St. Mary's some trouble, but St. Mary's will find a way to pull out the game. So those are some picks, ideas, wagering considerations for you as we wrap up the Sports Bash here on 97.3 ESPN. All right, you know what that sounder means. That is the final sounder. Caller number seven, you are it. You are in. You are the final one to enter for the Philly Strip to Baltimore contest. Thanks to Philly Sports Trips for supplying the great trip to Baltimore, the catering, the whole nine yards. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity on Father's Day weekend, but you have to be caller number seven at 609-573-3776. 609-573-3776. Call number seven. You are in. And then you must be present next Thursday at Maynard's in Margate for the Phillies watch party or Mike Gill and Sports Bash will be broadcasting live during the Phillies game, and you have a chance to win, but you must be caller 7 at 609-573-3776. I'm Josh Hennig. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and I'll catch you later. The field is set, and your bracket predictions are hopefully done. The 2024 Big Dance tips off with first four games from Dayton. Then on Thursday, all day, first-round action gets underway. Make sure you don't miss any of the action. Stay tuned for Western One's exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's Tournament right here. Listen to all the madness. Oh, my goodness. March Madness right here on 97.3 ESPN.